Is the sun bothering you guys? Is that okay, the sun? Everyone okay? Will the sunlight bother you guys, or are you guys okay? All right, the Alpha Fox, that's great. Okay, good. We love you, Father. We love you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit. We praise you, we worship you, the God and Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Father, I ask in Jesus' name, bless this session. <clears throat> Anoint this session by the power of the Holy Spirit. Anoint me to speak clearly. Save me from stammering, confusion, from distractions of Satan, Father. Help me to glorify my God and Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, your heart that became flesh, your beloved. Wash us and cleanse us in the blood of the Lamb, the Lord Jesus. Fill us with the Holy Spirit to love you and to worship you and to obey you and fear you and glorify you, Father, by our words and by our actions, <clears throat> by our lifestyle. And Father, save me from error and stammering confusion and convict this young man. Convict him, Father, by the Holy Spirit. Convict him and open his heart and mind to the truth. Give me the grace to be patient and to refute the arguments for the glory of Jesus. <clears throat> Fill my lungs, my chest, my throat, my heart with the breath of life. <clears throat> Loosen my tongue to speak for the glory of Jesus and strengthen my voice and make it pleasing to the ears of your servants and rebuke Satan and keep him far away and strengthen the internet connection. We love you, Bobby. We need you. We love you, Lord Jesus. We need you. Holy Spirit, we love you. We need you. Bless this session and beatify me for the glory of Christ and Bring this man to the feet of Jesus and bless the church in Jesus' name. Okay, it's not Mustafa, it's Muhammad Sharif. You sure the sunlight's not bothering you? <clears throat> okay, let me just do this. La, la, la. It takes me a while to warm up in the morning with my voice. Keep praying for me, guys. Pray for my daughters and I that the Lord Jesus will provide our daily bread. Keep us healthy. And if the Lord Jesus tarries, that I see them grow up to be godly women. Pray that the Lord Jesus will make us holy and pure and obedient to him and nourish us for the glory of Jesus Christ. You'll find the Lord God's name, Lord Jesus Christ. Muhammad Sharif, you wanted to talk? It's not Mustafa, and I have to apologize to him because you saw Mustafa. He's a young kid, a young punk who has no respect. He doesn't even respect his own God. But in Jesus' name, this man is different, so let's call him. You ready? I'm having my coffee <clears throat> as Holy Spirit clears and cleanses my throat in jesus name <laughs> please do pray with me that the lord jesus will give me the grace of self-control self-discipline to keep getting healthier for his glory in jesus name we love you father Holy spirit excite us for the word okay oh we got another stupid dog huh hey des divine you are a stupid demonic dog and you're a bastard like your father and your father's the devil who's been crushed under the feet of Jesus and the blood of Jesus Christ is our shield against him to overcome him. Get out of here, dude. Filthy, wicked, barking dog. Slime. God, what a great way to start your morning and your session rebuking another filthy, demonic, spiritual bastard dog for the glory of Jesus. Lord Jesus, give us victory by your blood. All right. What a great way. Pray my head shrinks too as I lose weight and I keep losing that my head will shrink. All right, he declined my call. You believe it? I don't know why. What happened, Mom? Is why did you decline my call, sir? You hurt my feelings. Are you there? Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, why did you like decline my call? You're at my feelings. You see my shirt? You guys see my shirt? Yeah. It says, it is yeah. what it is. It's it is what it is, man. All right. Yeah, go ahead. Just wanted to do that. All right. So can you speak louder so we can see if your mic is okay? <clears throat> yeah, can you hear me out? Keep speaking. Yeah. Keep speaking. Yeah. Keep. Check, check, check. You just check, go, la, 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 Okay, go ahead. Okay. No, oh, no, no. Okay, my friend. Good to see you. Sorry again for the confusion. I thought you were that young man, Mustafa, who's a loud mouth. He's like a punk who comes in the comment section and attacks. I apologize to you. I didn't know that. So I then when I found out it's you, then I understood. You're not like him. You have some respect and decency because you try to follow your Quran. Because remember what chapter 6, 
verse 108 of the Quran says. It says, do not insult your gods, insult right? You cannot insult those who, who believe in other, other than Allah. Yeah, because what happens if you do? <clears throat> what will they Allah do in return? Uh, you insult Allah, and then the sin will be on me. Is this sound okay, guys? Can you hear him, or does he need to improve the sound? <clears throat> Besides, even if the verse in the Quran, chapter 6, verse 108, even if you didn't say that, I would still respect you. Good man. You, you were taught manners by your parents. You have good parents. May God bless you all and guide you to his truth. But that's how it is. Uh, so with that said, you want to talk about, because I told you that Muhammad confirmed the Bible and he asked me to prove it, right? <clears throat> yes. Okay. So guys, the topic is, <laughs> sorry, man. I'm getting old. I'm 48 years old, so it takes me a longer while to warm up and get my throat warmed up in the morning. So bear with me because it's morning here. So the topic is the Quranic view of the Bible. The Quranic view of the Bible because he wanted to know where does the Bible or the Quran confirm the Bible. So you have your Quran with you, right? Yeah. Go to Surah Al-Baqarah, <clears throat> chapter 2. We're going to start. There's a lot of verses. We're going to work through it. And if you want to bring in hadith, I can. But let's first focus on the Quran itself. Okay. Say which verse? Say it again. Which verse? Yeah, chapter which 2. Verse? We're going to read chapter 2, verses 40 to 44. But two things you need to do. It's very slow yes. and very loud because, remember, people need to hear you. Mm -hmm. so go ahead. You can. Can you hear me? Yes. O children of Israel, remember my favor which I have bestowed upon you and fulfill my covenant. But I will ful fulfill your covenant and be afraid of me. And believe in what I have sent down confirming that which is already with you and be not the first to disbelieve in it. And do not exchange my sin. sin sorry. sorry Louder. Forgive me. I do not exchange my signs. I do not exchange my signs for a small price. And fear me, and do not mix the truth with falsehood, or conceal the truth while well, you know it. And establish prayer, and give zakah, and bow down those who, who sorry, and bow with those who bow. Do you order righteousness for the people, and forget yourselves while you recite the scriptures? Then will you not reason? Okay, now read forty-four again, and remember, you keep going low. Force yourself to be loud. Go ahead. Do you order righteousness, righteousness, righteousness of the people and forget yourselves while you recite the scripture? Then will you not reason? Okay, so now number one, pay attention. It says they recite or read the scripture and then read 41. Read verse 41. And believe in what I have sent down, confirming that which is already with you. Already with and them, be right? Not the first to disbelieve. Okay, now. Pay attention to two points because we got more verses before I ask questions. I want you to pay attention to two points as you as you read chapter 2 of the Quran, verses 40 to 44. 41 says that what Allah sent down confirms that which is already with you. And then 44 says, do, do you recite the scriptures? And even says, do you conceal the truth that you know? So they know the truth, but their sin is they conceal it. The Quran confirms what is already with them. It confirms what they have, and they recite the scripture. So we keep those three facts in mind, right? Keep it in mind. Okay. Can I say one thing, please? Well, depends. Go ahead. <laughs> sorry, um, and then, sorry to interrupt you, but then um, verse 40 says, O children of Israel. So this is talking to Ben Israel. Yeah, this and you're making my point. This is talking to because us. you're not patient. I'm not going, you're not patient, so now I'm going to have to, because of your impatience, show you. The Jews of Muhammad's time, their scriptures, the Quran confirms. What were those scriptures? So you're not patient. I know it's talking about children. It's not talking about O Bani Africa. What are the scriptures that the Israelites had at the time of Muhammad that the Quran confirms that they read and is the truth? Is it Torah? Okay, so you see, I know what the passage is saying. I'm going to show you not one verse, dozens. Because then you have a dilemma in your hands. Now go to chapter 2, verse 89. <clears throat> it 
And don't forget, don't speak low, speak loud, because you have a tendency of going low. Chapter 2, verse 89. And when they came to them, a book from Allah confirming that which was with them. Although before they used to pray for victory against those who disbelieved. But then when they came to them, that which they recognized, they disbelieved in, they disbelieved in it. So the curse of Allah will be upon the disbelievers. Okay, read the first part again. And when they came, when they came to them, a book from Allah confirming that which was with them confirming that which is already with them at that time right what they have at that time right that's what you just yeah. read yeah okay yeah so i just want to make sure you're seeing it and not try and ignore it confirming that which is with them that means what they had and they were reading at that time okay now chapter 2 verse 91 Oh, Chapter 2, verse 91. And when it said to them, believe in what Allah has revealed, they say we believe only in what was revealed to us, and they disbelieved in what came after it, while it is the truth confirmed that which is wrong. Say, then why did you kill the prophets of Allah before, if you are believers? Yeah, well, two things. Uh, the, we heard a rattlesnake in you. Do you have a rattlesnake nearby, or are you okay? Oh, no, you know, it's because I'm, I'm, um, I'm outside my house and where I am, there's leaves. So that, that the wind breathes the leaves. Okay, that's fine. Just want to make sure because rattlesnake may be a sign that there's a jinn or a demon trying to attack you. May the Lord Jesus Christ save us. Okay. Did you read 291? What does it do again? What does it say? Read it slowly and loudly. What does it say again? 291? And, and when it said to them, believe in what Allah has revealed, they say we believe only in what was revealed to us. And they disbelieve in what came after it, while it is confirming the truth which is with them. Confirming the truth Say, that's with them. So they have the truth, right? They have the truth with them. Yeah. It confirms what is with them. They have the truth with them. And so you see the repeated emphasis because there's more. We're not. I'm not going to ask you questions yet until we go through all these verses. Okay, so now chapter 2, verse 97. Yeah. Whoever... Say, whoever is an enemy to, to Gabriel, it is he. It is he who has brought the Quran down upon your heart by permission of Allah, confirming that which was before it. And confirming which and is before it. Now, believers. before slowly, don't rush. There's no rush. It confirms what was before it, and what was before it is what they have with them. <clears throat> what they read and recite with them is that which was before it, right? Yeah. Okay. So that was 297. Now read chapter 2, verse 101. And when a messenger from Allah came to them, confirming that which was with them, a party of them has been given the scripture through the scripture of Allah behind the box, as if they did not know. Read it one more time. And when a messenger from Allah came to them, confirming that which was with them. Confirming the that which was with years. them. Confirming that. That's the part I want you to focus, not read too fast. Now, how many verses you just read? Chapter 2, verse 41 and 44. Chapter 2, verse 89 and 91. And chapter 2, verse 101. This Quran and Muhammad confirm what is with them at that time, what they had, what they read. They read the scripture. They have the truth. And the Quran confirms it, not falsifies it. This is repeated teaching in the Quran. Now read chapter 2, verse 121. Chapter 2, verse 121. One twenty one. Yep. Okay, just one hand. Those to whom we have yes. given the book recited with its true recital, they believe in it, and whoever disbelieves in it, it is they who are the losers. Read that first part again. Those who have been given the book do what? Those to whom, those to whom we have given the book recite it with its true recital. How can they recite the true recitation, the reading of the book given to them, if the book is corrupt? So keep that in mind. Because there's few more. we got to go through the systematic. It's not one or two verses. Now go to chapter 4, verse 47 of the Quran. Chapter 4, verse 47. 
Chapter 4, verse 47 of the Quran. 4, verse 47. All you who were given the scripture, believe in what we have sent down concerning that which is with you, before we obliterate faces and turn them back and, and turn them towards their backs, or curse them as we curse the Sabbath breakers, and ever is the decree of Allah accomplished. Okay, read the first part of the verse again, 447. Oh, go ahead. Oh, you who are given the scripture, believe in what we have sent down, confirming that which is with you. Okay, you get the point, right? Confirming what you have, not yep. what you don't have. Confirming what is in your possession, what is before the Quran. <clears throat> and you read it with a true reading. You know the truth, though you conceal it, and you read the scripture. Now, I, I'm going to give you a few more, a few more, because there's a lot more. But then I'm going to have to ask you a question, and hopefully you'll be honest, and you'll fear God and speak the truth, not tap dance, because I don't like tap dancing. Go to chapter 3 of the Quran, verses 3 to 4. Chapter 3, verses 3 to 4. Chapter 3, verses 3 to 4. It's okay, don't worry, well, we're here. He has sent down upon you the book in truth, confirming what was before it, and he revealed the Torah and the gospel before as guidance for the people, and he revealed the Quran. Indeed, those who disbelieve in the verses of Allah will have to give them. Chapter 3, verses 3 to 4, slowly. One more time. Slowly. I don't know why you're rushing. Are you, like, are you running from the police or something? Why are you rushing? Slowly. Chapter 3, verses 3 and 4. <laughs> He has sent down upon you the truth of him in what was before us. Now, let me give you the actual, and you can ask anyone who reads the Arabic, ask your Imam. The word is musaddiqan. That word confirm comes from sadaqa. Here it says musaddiqan. <clears throat> Lima Baina Yadehi. Baina between Yadehi, his hands. Literally, it says, confirming what is between his hands. That's the literal Arabic. The word Baina Yadehi between his hands is an Arabic expression meaning that which he has access to, that which, which he can read, and it's there before him that he can pick up and read. So it's saying that the Quran was sent down to Muhammad confirming what is between Muhammad's hands. What is there in Muhammad's possession that he can pick, pick up, read, have access to what's in the hands of the Jews and Christians. And what's in, what's in the hands of the Jews and Christians? I'll finish it. The Torah and the Gospel. Okay, so, and we have a brother in the comment section who speaks Arabic. He's an Arabic speaker, and he says, you're right. And again... I'm not lying. Any Muslim will confirm it. Now, are, is it raining over there? It's just windy out there. Okay, okay. You say, when, please, when, in the name of Jesus Christ, your God and fashioner, be silent so this young man can hear the gospel in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, destroy all distractions so this man can see the truth in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So that was three verses three to four. I can give you more. But before I do that, here's what I need to ask, uh, ask you thus far. All these verses are clear as day. All of them are clear as day. The Quran, Muhammad, confirms what was there at that time in the hands of the Jews and the Christians, what they had, what they were reading, what was between Muhammad's hands. What books did the Jews and Christians have at the time of Muhammad? The Torah and the Bible. Okay, so you agree with that, right? Well, they had it, right? I agree, I agree with the fact that they had the Torah. So you yeah, agree yeah. with that, okay? Because it says confirm, not falsify. Musaddiqan sadaqa, confirm, the verb confirm. Doesn't say falsify, bears witness what you have is truth, it is pure. Because that verb is used. I'll give you an example where that verb sadaqa is used. Go to chapter 3, verse 39. Speaking of Yahya, John the Baptist. 
Peace be upon him. Say it again. Peace be upon him. Okay, if you want to say that, the Quran doesn't say that you say peace be upon them, which is another question I'll ask you in a minute. But chapter 3, verse 39. Okay. Read for me. So the angels came, called him while he was standing in prayer in the chamber. Indeed, Allah gives you good tidings of Yahya, confirming a word from Allah, an honorable abstaining, and a prophet from among the righteous. Okay, Yahya confirms a word from Allah, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, now that's the same verb, Sadaqa. When it says Yahya confirms a word from Allah, how does he confirm a word from Allah? By saying... This is the word of Allah. This is the one from Allah. He is truth. He is sent by God. I bear witness that he, he is the truth, right? Yeah. Okay, now go to chapter 66 of the Quran. Surat al-Tahrim, 66 verse 12. I can hear my voice in the background. So we got to mute the YouTube. Chapter 66 verse 12, Surat al-Tahrim. And the example, sorry, sorry, and Mary, the daughter of Amran, was go, was guarded her chastity. So we blew into through our angel, and she believed in the words of the Lord and his and his scriptures, and was of the devoutly obedient. Yeah. Now you're probably reading Sahih International, which butchers the Arabic. It doesn't say, and we blew through our angel. Uh, but put that aside. The word believe. <clears throat> Is actually the word from yeah. Sadaqah. Sorry, sorry. What? I'll go to. Um, I'll go to um, no. All right. And it doesn't say believe. It says wa sadaqat. Wa sadaqat bi kalimati rabbiha wa kutubihi wa qanat. Anyway, you get it. It's wa sadaqat. It's she confirms. But it's okay. Translated it confirms believes. It says, and she confirmed the books of her Lord and his words, right? The, the words and the books of her Lord, right? Okay. Okay. I found on the website. So okay, that's fine. 66 verse 12. It says, Allah has also set forth the parable of Mary, the daughter of Imran, who guarded her chastity, and into whom we breathed of, of our spirit, and who testified to the words of her Lord and his books. She was among the disobedient. The, the, among the obedient, not disobedient. Oh, sorry. Stuck for Allah. She was stuck for Allah. Stuck for Allah. min Muhammad. No way. She is of the obedient, not disobedient. Aoudhu Billah min Muhammad rajim Now, listen to what it says. Testify, believe, confirm. Mary confirm. Sadaqat. Confirm, believe in the words of Allah and his books. Now, when it says she confirmed... Allah's books and words. That means she believed in them, that they're true, they're pure, they're not corrupt, right? Yeah. When it says Yahya confirmed a word from Allah, that means he bears witness this word is from God, he is true, he is righteous, correct? Yeah. So when it says your prophet and the Quran confirm sadaqa. What the Jews and Christians had at that time. Confirm their books, what they recite. Confirm what is between his hands. That can only mean that Muhammad and Quran bear witness that you Jews and you Christians, what you're reading, your books are pure and true and uncorrupt. They are truth from your Lord. So my question to you is, what were those books that Muhammad said, these are the true words of God, preserved, and they're reading from them? Okay, I want to first start by I want, I want to first start by saying um, you mentioned in chapter six six verse twelve where it says that again. But, um, slowly. Maryam, so slowly you because you're six, speaking six, fast, and I can't you can't hear you because we speak fast. Slowly and loud. Good. You mentioned chapter sixty six verse twelve. Yes. Where Maryam, where Maryam she believed in the books of Allah and His but words. I believe that at the time, and His words. I believe that at the time. The, way, the, the books were the books went and corrupted back then. Beautiful. The say it again. Wait, wait. Say it again. again. You believe at that time, right? The books went. Okay, so yeah, you know what you just did, time, right? Mohammed, you know what you just did. 
you know what you well, just did? You just proved the Old Testament is the uncorrupt well, word of God. Can you hear me? Oh. Can you hear me? Yeah, can hear you. Well. Okay. Listen to me. Thank you yes, for proving the Old Testament I read is the uncorrupt yeah. word of God. You know why? Why? Because you just said the books at that time were uncorrupt, right? Yeah. Okay, well, we found the Dead Sea Scrolls, copies of the Old Testament in Hebrew in 1947, written 100 to 200 years before the birth of Jesus. So we know what those books were. She confirmed what you say. They were uncorrupt. And they're identical to what I read today. Thank you, Muhammad. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. You just proved my case. You get it? So now let's go she back. Saying, she was saying that. What? With, um, where did they find? Where did they the Nazi scrolls, dude? Everyone is mother knows the Nazi scrolls. So let me get you. I have the translated in English. Hold on. Everyone and Ahmed's mother know. Hold on. Wait there. Hold on. Here you go. Thank you, sir. Here you go. Do you see it? Tell that rattlesnake to be gone. Can you see it? Do you see it? Yes. Okay, the Dead Sea Scrolls Bible. Listen. The oldest known Bible translated for the first time into English. These copies of the Old Testament were found in 1947. Ancient copies of the books of the Bible in Hebrew. Written 200 years before the time of Jesus, confirming and proving that the books that Jesus and Mary had and read are what I read today. Because these scrolls read the way my Bible reads today. And you just admitted, and we got you recorded, I believe the books at that time were uncorrupt. That means you got to start reading the Old Testament now. Good job, buddy. Appreciate it. Okay, okay wait, wait, wait. Sorry, um, um, where were these scrolls found? Okay, stop the game. We have it. Stop the nonsense. You just proved those books are uncorrupt because they're found in Jerusalem, the Dead Sea. And tell that rattlesnake, I'm not debating him, tell the jinn to be gone. So enough with your games. Now, what did Muhammad confirm? What did Muhammad confirm at his time? This is not him. Confirms what was with them. With what them. did they have? So we know we know what they had at the time of Jesus. So you just proved my point. What did they have at the time of Muhammad? The Bible and Torah. What were they? Because if you're saying that Mary confirmed those books, they were uncorrupt at that time. Then how could Muhammad confirm the books of the Jews and Christians if they were corrupt? Maybe he confirmed the prophets of the book instead of Maybe. The one about the book itself. Where does it say that in your Quran? Because I'm. Where does it say that it was confirming the book? Say it again. It doesn't say that it was confirming the book. Yeah. Do you want me to I read the verses said, again? I said, wait, wait. Do you want me to read the verses again? Chapter sorry. 2, verse 41, confirming what you have and you recite the book. Chapter 2, verse 89. Chapter 2, verse 91. You, you're having amnesia now? Do you want to read it again? Do you want to read it again? You mean I just wasted 20 minutes on you reading the Quran verses? No, no, no. Okay. Okay. You mentioned chapter 2, verse 121. No, you read chapter 2, verse 41 and 44. Muhammad, stop your nonsense, dude. Chapter 2, verse 41, 44. 89, 91, 97, 101. They all said Muhammad confirms what is with them. What is with them? What do they have? They had guitars. What was with them? Guitars? No, the Bible is okay. So, okay. Why are you asking me? Where does it say he confirmed those books? You just admit he's confirming Bible Torah. So, it says, it says it confirms what was with them. Look, okay, let's try here. Wait, I have a friend named Timmy. He understands better logic than you Muslims. Uh, Timmy, when the Quran says Muhammad confirmed what the Jews had, and this guy says it's the Bible and the Torah, that means it's confirming those books, the Bible and the Torah. Did you get that, Timmy? Oh, okay, Timmy. See, Timmy got it. Could you? Did you get it? Or Timmy got it. My friend Timmy got it. Okay, let's try this again. 
since you just admit they had the Bible and Torah with them, and what Muhammad confirmed is what they had with them, and that's the Bible and the Torah, where does he say they were corrupt? Oh, it says in chapter 2, verse 59, that was corrupt. Okay, and if I show you, it doesn't the, say it's corrupt. Hold on, wait, listen. Oh! If I show you, it doesn't say it's corrupt. Will yes. you spit on Muhammad? Will you spit on Sorry? Muhammad because it doesn't say it's corrupt? Read chapter 2, verse 59. I'm going to now explode your lie. Read 259. Then the wrongdoers substituted another saying for that which had been given for them. Okay. And so we and so we sent Who out are the wrongdoers source, and what is their saying? Who are the wrongdoers? What is their saying? Where does it say they changed the book? It doesn't say that there. So are you not going to spit on Muhammad with me? Because Muhammad said in the verses before and after, he confirms what they have. You just said he's a liar. <laughs> Muhammad on you and your face. Can you spit on Muhammad for me now? No, okay, Please why are you no, playing no, with your no. Quran and doing with your Quran what the Quran condemns Jews and Christians for doing? It says they twist the book with their tongues, meaning they play with the verses and then misinterpret. That's what you're doing. Are you a munafiq? Are you a kafir now? No. Okay, can you no. stop doing that to your Quran? See, I don't respect your Quran or Muhammad, but at least I'm showing you enough respect by telling you here's what it says. You're being dishonest and you're telling me, oh, 259. Uh, they, they changed the saying. What does the saying got to do with the books? And who no, changed it and to, when? According, according to, like, according to um, another translation I've got, it says, by those, by those who wrong change, and then in brackets, those words. What words where? People, people of the book. At the time where does it say? The people of the book changed the book, the kitab. It says, it says, it says in brackets the words. And so, is the brackets part of your Arabic? No. Okay, so why don't you stop this stupid, silly nonsense? Where does it say here the Jews changed their kitab, which now you create a contradiction? So you're saying Muhammad is an illiterate, stupid demon. Because earlier he says he confirms what they have, no, and now you're saying no, he changed no, his no, mind? No, 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 no. Okay, can you stop doing that's that to your saying, prophet? That's not what I'm saying. Can you stop doing that to your prophet? I'm not doing that to my prophet. Doing that to my prophet. Can I'm you stop doing, doing that to your prophet? Let's try it again. Can you stop doing that to your prophet? Can you stop trying to convince us that your prophet is a stupid demon, an inconsistent liar? Because the verses I'm before. Not to... stop that one. No. Okay, but no, listen no, to me, no, Muhammad. No, listen, to listen. No, listen to me. you're not listening now. The verses before, chapter 2, verses 40 to 44, and the verses after 59, the same message. He confirms what you have. He confirms what you read. He confirms what's with you. You're saying Muhammad is so stupid prophet, after saying prophet, that, he now prophet. contradicts himself. No, it's no. Okay. When it says, like, um, when it refers. What? Sorry. So can you stop your nonsense? So what was it that he confirmed? What did they have? They have the book. Okay. But then the Quran was talking about the prophets of the book. So Can you show me in those verses where it says Jesus. the prophets of the book? Show me the verses what you just said. Can you show me? Yeah, I can. Confirming what you have. Did they have the prophets? Was Moses sleeping in their tent? Or they had the books? What did they have? See, now you're being stupid. The books. But then they had... Okay. Show me now, listen, show me now where it says that Muhammad confirmed the prophets because they didn't have the prophets with them. Muhammad, Moses wasn't sleeping in the tent. They had the books. What did he confirm? Those books have the prophets in them. So it's where it's does it say the they confirm the, the books because they have the prophets in them? Show me where your Quran says that. Are you better than your Allah? You speak better than him? Show me that. Let's try this again. What did they have with them? Was Moses sleeping in the tent and Aaron next to them or the books? They had they had books. Okay, show books me now where it says it's confirming those books because the prophets are mentioned in them. You're making the claim. You prove it. Stop your game. It's You can't tell me anyway where it says... Like it's talking about the actual book. It, it doesn't you want to bet? Chapter 5, verses 43 oh, to 48 right. buries you. Chapter 5, verses 43 to 48. You want to bet? 
So let me uh, ask him because you're doing the tap dance. You're embarrassing yourself and your prophet. Let's try this again. You made the claim. Don't ask me to refute you. Prove your claim. To chapter 5, oh, sorry. Don't go there yet until you prove your claim. I'm not going to let you run. You made the claim. Show me where the Quran made the claim you made. Don't, don't do the tap dance. Show me what? Show me what the Quran says. The this is now the third time. Are you illiterate like Muhammad? Was Muhammad stupid or are you stupid? Which one is it? Because let me repeat what I just said. When you make the claim, you need to Jesus, prove it. Don't insult my prophet. Don't insult my prophet. I, I'll don't insult, insult prophet. your prophet. He's a demonic bastard. He raped women and treat him like whores. You want to talk about muta? Where? Where? Okay. Where? Go to chapter 4, verse 24. Now I'm going to embarrass Muhammad. Chapter where's 4, this? verse 24, where's where's Muhammad. This? Chapter 4, verse 24. Now I'm going to embarrass you. Go to Surah An-Nisa, chapter 4, verse 24. You asked for it. Go to chapter 4, verse 24. Okay. okay? You opened your mouth because you can't be honest and respectful. Now I got embarrassed, Muhammad. Go to chapter 4, verse 24. And married women accept those, and uh, married women accept those your right hand to this. Is the decree of Explain Allah what that means. Lawful to you. Explain and, what um, that means. Sorry. What does it mean? Married so, women are unlawful for you, except those that your right hands possess. Explain that for me. What does that mean? Marry women. Uh, if you don't get the context, 2324 says, women forbidden for you. Women that you cannot touch sexually. Married women are forbidden, except those whom your right hands possess. Explain that, please. Um, who is um, haram for you in this case? Explain what it means that married women are unlawful except those that your right hands possess. Explain it. I have the hadith, but I'm going to give you a chance to embarrass Muhammad for me. Explain I, I, it. I don't know what you mean. Sorry. You're kidding me. Explain what? When it says in chapter 4, verses 23 to 24... Chapter 4, verse 23, 24. Here are women that you cannot touch. You cannot touch married women except those whom your right hands possess. What does that mean? I don't know what that means. What? You don't know what it means, honestly? I said that. Okay. I'm going to give you the link for it. It's up to our... It's up to our... Hold on. I'm done, dude. I'm going to give you the answer. It's up to our... Let me get it for you. I'm going to give you the first. I'm going to give you the first of your patient. Read. Oh, God. I'm down, dude. I'm going to get you the verse. I know you're scared now, but you did it to yourself because you have no respect for what's the truth. Okay? I'm going to get it for you online so you can read it. I'll have you read it. Okay? I'm going to let you read it. Just one second. Let me get it. Let's you get it. Second. And you're going to read it out loud, all right? Okay. All right, one second. Let me go there. It's going to take me a while to find it, but let me get it for you. Let me go here. Hold on. Ah. He's going to read it for us. One second. Let me get it. Okay. Sorry, guys, for the late. That's what happens when you gotta find stuff online. Okay. Here it is. I'm gonna let you read it. Okay. You're gonna read it out loud. Here's the. I'm gonna send it to you right now in Skype. Okay. Here you go. You asked for it, buddy. I don't understand this man. He did this to women. Read it for us. For the rest of you, here's the link. Click on it. Read it for me slowly. And notice that it's Sahih, right? It's a Sahih Hadith. Sound. So don't play games and tell me it's not sound. Uh, Abu Sa'i al Khudri said that Apostle of Allah sent a military expedition to. Slowly. Why are you reading fast? Slowly, Muhammad. 
slowly. What is your problem with reading fast? Are you that ashamed? Slowly read it. Sent a military expedition to Otas on the occasion of the Battle of Hunayn. They met their enemy and fought with them. They defeated them and took them captives. Some of the companions of Apostle Allah had relations with the female captives because of their pagan husbands. So Allah, the Exalted, sent down the Quran. Slowly, go back again. Muhammad, I know you're doing it deliberately Hello. because you're huh? scared. Go back and read it slowly I'll again. Read it again, slowly. Abu Sa'id al-Khudri. Abu Sa'id. Loud, they can't hear you. Loud, Muhammad. Loud. Apostle of Allah sent a military, sent a military expedition to Otas on the occasion of the Battle of Hunayn. They met the enemy They met the enemy and fought with them. They defeated them and took them. Slow. Just, Slow. Slow. Stop being scared of your prophet. Go ahead, read it. Sorry. You keep reading fast because you're showing us you're embarrassed of your prophet. Slow if you're not embarrassed of what's your prophet. Read it. Okay. So I'm out us. Read it. Go ahead. Abu Sa'id al Khudri said the Apostle of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sent a military expedition to Otas on the occasion of the Battle of Hunayn. So again, he's speeding up again. Do you, why I need to read it for you? Because you're embarrassed of your joke, Muhammad. Why are you reading fast? Slow, I'm gonna embarrass you and read it slow for you. Read it slow. Keep going now. Where you Abu Sa'id al Khudri said the Apostle of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent a military expedition to Otas on the occasion of the Battle of Hunayn. They met their enemy and fought with them. They defeated them and took them captives. Some of the companions of Apostle of Allah sallallahu were reluctant to have relations with have relations with the female captives. Because of their pagan husband. So Allah the Exalted sent down the Quranic verse, and all married women are forbidden unto you, save those captives whom your right hand possesses. This is to say that they are lawful. Okay, I'm going to read it slow for you as well. They defeated them and took them captive. Some of the companions of Apostle of Allah were reluctant to have relations with the female captives because of their pagan husbands so your female captives their husbands are alive so allah the exalted sent down the chronic verse and all married women are forbidden to you save those captives whom your right hands possess this is to say they are lawful for them when they complete their waiting period <clears throat> there it does so the verse says married women captives your muslim Ikhwan wanted to have sex with them, but the husbands were alive. And Allah said, it's okay. They're lawful for you. You can have sex with them. Are you okay with that? What if they What if they actually like had permission to do so? Wait, Wait so if someone takes your mother so captive, permission. someone takes your mother captive and wants to have sex with her, your mother's going to say okay? What are you? Well, it, there's no hadith that says that they can say okay. You know, right there, it tells you they belong to the Muslims. They can have sex with them. Why are you playing games with your prophet? Why are you such a joke? No, Let no, me no. ask you again. If Just your mother say. is taken captive, if your mother is taken captive, you're, th you're saying your mother would say, oh, sure, have sex with me. My husband's alive. You just attacked my village. It's okay. I just want to have sex with you. Really? No, what thing was it? The These women, women are, are captive. Women These women passion. are captive. Huh? These women are captive. Their husbands are alive. You're and telling they, me these women are going to be okay they, with Abu Bakr sleeping with them. And they um, these women they they were like like they knew that the pro they knew about Islam. They knew Islam. Was oh, they knew Islam, so it's okay for them to be Islam. raped. Are you that stupid, man? Seriously? No, I. We just say they were raped. It doesn't say they were raped. Which woman who has any dignity is going to sleep with a man who's taken her captive and her husband's still alive? What in the world are you smoking? It, like, it doesn't say that they were raped. It's in front of your eyes, the hadith. Stop improving on the hadith and explaining it better than your prophet.
I don't like. Uh, I don't want to say. I'm okay, good. Totally At least be honest really and say I don't have an answer. Stop making it up and embarrassing yourself because you're disgusting us. If you see the reaction, the Christians are disgusted with you Muslims who would try to defend such filth. Just say I don't have an answer. They weren't raped though because they have because they actually gave because they obviously didn't. If they said no, then, then I was a different. No, the then Quran the people, hadith nowhere so says so you're lying. Nowhere the Quran hadith says they have a choice. You liar. Muhammad, show me the Quran hadith. I'm gonna hang up on you and embarrass your prophet. Stop your lies, you wicked tool of the devil. Nowhere the Quran hadith says they had a choice because they had no choice. They belonged to them. They were their captives. Stop lying for the love of God. Stop lying for the love of God. No man would follow a prophet who says to sleep with married women because you're a captive. We spit on such a prophet. Stop lying. You're embarrassing yourself. You're making us disgusted with you. I'm going to hang up on you. Why didn't I'm going to hang up on you. Why didn't they? You wicked demonic tool of the devil. You wicked demonic bastard. There you go. This is Islam for you. You get it now? This is Islam for you. Any religion that would justify that, you know this is a satanic religion from the pit of hell. You caught it, right? This is Islam for you. This is what's going to happen to you if Islam becomes dominant and uppermost. Okay? Okay. If Islam becomes dominant and uppermost, and the Muslims have the upper hand, they will rape your women, take them as property, take the children as captives, and they will slit your throat. That's Islam. Don't let them lie to you. Don't let these filthy scum like Hamza Yusuf pretend Islam is peaceful. This is what they'll do to you. This is the religion. And for a guy like that to justify it, you see, unless Jesus Christ intervenes, unless Jesus Christ intervenes and changes them, he will be the first to slit my throat and rape my wife, if I have one, and my daughters. This is Islam, America. This is Islam, UK. This is Islam, the West. This is what's coming. If you don't turn to Jesus and repent and cry out to the God of heaven, to save us from Islam and save Muslims from this filthy, wicked, demonic bastard named Muhammad who's burning in hell. This is it. This is the religion. You with me there? <clears throat> so if you guys don't wake up, if you guys don't repent, if you don't, if you guys don't seek Jesus. And cry to Jesus and love Jesus and worship Jesus and obey him and preach and evangelize. This is what's going to come upon you. Their knives and their swords will be at your throat, at your necks. As they slaughter you and take your women, your children, captives and rape them. This is the religion. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. And let me be quite honest. I know this is going to sound harsh. Stay away from folks who are being used by Muslims, even though these folks think that they're actually serving the Lord Jesus and preaching the gospel. Number one, James White. I have to be honest. Stay away from him and the way he deals with Muslims. He doesn't know he is dangerous to us and a useful tool in the hands of Muslims. His approach does not work. Keep supporting Christian Prince. Keep supporting Osama Dagdok, El Fadi, David Wood. These are the men that will tell you the true face of Islam. May the Lord Jesus grant James repentance. I'm sorry to say this. He's a brother, but he's dangerous. And he thinks he's on in Christ, but he's doing great damage. And he's a useful tool in the hands of the Muslims. If he's not going to repent, may the Lord remove him from witnessing to Muslims, because he's doing it to build up his debate record so he can get more people sworn. Look, look at me. I debated Muslims in a mosque. Yeah, because they think you're a useful idiot. 
and they think you're beneficial to their cause because you give them respect and a platform. Okay? I got to be honest. The reason why I'm now heated and passionate, you know why I'm heated and passionate? Yes, support Hatun Tash. She's more a warrior than James White could dream of. None of us are on her level. Tatun Tash is like 50 Samsons in one. A tiny woman rocking the UK, turning it upside down, and not afraid, willing to die because she loves Jesus. She is a warrior. James White wishes he could be a tenth like her. Okay? Hatun Tash, DCCI. Yep. So keep that in mind. So with that said, you saw the true spirit of Islam, the true face of Islam. You see, you, you notice the pattern. You quote their Quran, they twist their Quran. You quote their Hadith, they twist their Hadith. You quote their sources, they explain it away. What is, what is it with this religion, if it's not satanic to its very core, that it's from the pit of hell, that they can't even respect their own religion. They can't even respect their own tradition. They have to twist it, explain it away, pervert what it clearly says that even a blind man sees because they have no honor, no shame. If this is not demonic from the pit of hell, I don't know what is. And you wonder why we get upset. Anyway, folks. If you guys want to call me on Skype with questions, I may take Q&A now. We, we have over 400 people because that's it. We're done with this guy. You see why I bring them on? To then put them in their place, shame them into repentance by the power of the Holy Spirit, block them because it's a waste of time. This shows you you need the Holy Spirit of the living God to open their hearts and minds to see the truth because it's like talking to a brick wall. Even Timmy, my buddy Timmy, who's off the wall, off the hinges, he understood. This inanimate door understood more than that Muslim. Right? I don't think so, Testament of Faith. If I blocked you, there was a good reason. Why did you get blocked, Testament of Faith? If I blocked you, there was a good reason. Maybe you're another demonic troll, another idiot of the devil. That's usually why I block people. Tell me why did you get blocked? I don't just block for no reason. Anyone else with questions? If not, I'll just shut down. And maybe I'll be on tonight later. I don't know. I don't know what's my schedule like today. Okay. Yeah, if you guys have questions, feel free to ask. I'll see if I'll answer. I'll see if I answer. But may, maybe you can call me on Skype and have your Bible open so you can read. Yellow. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hi. How are you? Can you hear me? Unfortunately, yes, I can hear you. Uh, hi. I, hi, Sam. Um, I'm a Christian and yes, I have a question. So, like, let's say, like, like the hadith that you have just shown, like, or anything that's kind of like embarrassing to Muhammad, like when, when the hadith is like sa Sa'i or Hassan. Say it um, again. What is it again? Okay, so, so let's say there's a, like a Sa'i or Hassan hadith. Okay, Sa'i like and a, Hassan, okay. And if there's something like embarrassing hadith about Muhammad, when I point that out to Muslim. Brother, I noticed one thing. One thing, you have a hard time pronouncing the H, right? Because you said Muhammad, Muhammad. Mm -hmm. Is that because of your background? What What is your nationality? Uh, I, I'm a Korean. Okay, because I noticed you said Muhammad. I was just curious why. Okay, so then, yeah, there's some cultures, there are certain words they have a hard time pronouncing. That's mm -hmm. true with every country. Like the Philippines, they'll say, I'm from Philippines. I'm Philippine. They have a hard time mm -hmm. with the F. Okay, but anyway, go ahead. Yes. Yes, go ahead. And so I, I point out, like the what would you just point like the the hadith that you use, I, I including that one, I kind of point that out to Muslims, mm -hmm. and Muslims kind of say, even if it says Sai, like some scholars, I don't know, I don't know how to, how they explain it. They they kind of say like the grade doesn't always 
hundred percent correct. So like, so what? What do you want me to tell that Muslim? I mean, how do you? You, you think I'm God? I'm going to convince him? No, I was wondering like, what would you like? How, I didn't know how to respond. Sometimes they say, oh, like, even like, there's a different ways to uh, grade. Um, I, I don't know. Like, well, even yeah, if, I, if I don't understand. They, they, what don't, you're, they don't. They don't. Brother, your I don't, question. I don't know what to say to them? Well, if we're gonna talk over each other. Hold on. Let me ask Timmy because uh, we're talking. Hey, Timmy. If he talks over me, then he won't understand. And Timmy, I don't understand his question because he's all over the map. Maybe you can repeat the question for him. You want Timmy to repeat the question for you, Joseph? Because I still yes. have no clue what you're talking about. You want to try it again? What are you asking me? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I guess like <laughs> poor guys get frustrated. I don't know. How, I don't know how to explain it. I'm sorry, but so if you don't know how to explain I, it, I don't read hearts. Hold on, hold on. Let me read your heart. Hold on, Joseph. Let me see. Hold on. Let me see. Oh yeah. Okay. Now he's, okay, Joseph. I just saw that. Oh no, I got. If you can't explain, no. how I'm gonna figure it out, man? Okay. So like. There, you know, like there's a hadith about um, Buddha well and like the Muhammad did evolution from the crappy yeah. water. Okay. And the grade was like Sai from. Okay. Uh, that and I pointed out to the uh, Muslims and they say, no, 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 it's like that one doesn't count. Things Why like doesn't that. it count? I didn't know what like what to say to them, even though like Why the grade was count? Sai. Why doesn't it count? So, so I was wondering, like, if there is, there is any an, other standards Joseph, besides the grades? Joseph, brother, her. let me ask mm -hmm. Timmy. Uh, Timmy, why doesn't it count, Timmy? Oh, okay. Why doesn't it count, Joseph? Uh, you never no, thought you never thought about asking them that question? Seriously? A simple question is, why doesn't it count? No, I, I never. <laughs> wait, wait, <laughs> say it again, count. Joseph. A basic question of, hey, why doesn't it count? It's sahi, right? So it's sound, it passed the test, so why doesn't it count? You never thought about asking that question? I thought maybe there was another way of uh, categorizing besides... The Even race. though it says sahi, right? Mm -hmm. It said sahi. Yeah, it says sahi. And they told you it doesn't count. And you never bother asking, why doesn't it count when it says sahi sound? If it's sound, that means it passes, it passes with flying colors. It's A. Mm -hmm. You never thought about asking it? <laughs> well, I'm still kind of like new to. It's okay, Joseph. Sort of, I love you, man. Timmy's yeah, laughing yeah. too. He's all, he's laughing. He's like coming off the hinges. He's laughing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I think that Joseph, helps don't with my answer. don't complicate things. Mm -hmm. Keep it simple. Know to ask the right questions. When someone tells me, "Well, just because it's sahih it doesn't mean it's authentic," why not? Why doesn't it? Why isn't it authentic? Mm -hmm. Your scholar said it's sahih. It means it passed with flying colors. It's at least A, if not A minus. So that means it passes. Mm -hmm. So why isn't it authentic? I see. Simple, right? I, I, I guess it was their takiyas. I guess they were trying to. Well, you got something. it, Joseph. But then be smarter. Be wise as a serpent. You know, innocent as a dove. Be harmless as a dove. Mm -hmm. Wise as a serpent. Know how these demons think. And know how to ask the right questions. Oh, so sahi means it passes with flying colors, but you're still saying it's not good enough. Why? Oh, I know why, because it's embarrassing you. It shows Muhammad is a tool of the devil, <laughs> an uneducated moron. That's why it doesn't count. I see. You see? Right, right. Thank you. Oh, I, I do have one go ahead, more ask me, quick go ahead. question. I'm, I'm here. I? Keep asking me. Some, you know, like, I, I looked into hadith about like virgins in paradise. Yes. And like most of most of them are like graded as daif. Daif? Is, daif jitan? Daif? Mm -hmm. Okay. Isn't so, daif like still passed? Yes, it isn't is. It? Like, daif means isn't it, still it was daif means it was still good enough to be included. It could not be rejected. And mm -hmm. with Muslims, they'll say, we don't use da'if for jurisprudence. But you can use da'if hadith for <clears throat> exhortation. And those da'if hadith are backed up by the Quran because the Quran does talk about whores of paradise, right? Go ahead, mm -hmm. Tatiana. If you want to call, go ahead. Make sure you have a ring. You get what I'm saying? Yes. That, that, that really clears things up for me. Joseph, Thank I you. like you, man. You're a good man. I really appreciate the, all the things you do. I, I I don't watch your shows every day, but like I. Well, oh, that's very encouraging, Joseph. 
No, I, I that's very encouraging. I'm, I appreciate you, even though ninety nine percent of your sessions I don't watch, but I still appreciate you. Gee, that makes me happy. No, no, no. I, I still like watch maybe like two, three times a week. So, so you at least get to watch all of them eventually. I maybe I maybe I won't sit down from like till it ends because sometimes it's kind of late. But but you uh, uh, do you eventually get around to watching all of them? Yeah, yeah. E even yesterday during the daytime at, at night, I, I watched yours, and I also watch shows from David Wood and you. Oh, so you watch Hater Wood, too. who's ugly as sin and puts people to sleep, and you watch him all the way through. But with me, with my good looks, you only watch <laughs> 50 per Gee, you're really building no, up my confidence here. No, that's not what I mean. <laughs> okay, but no, do you I eventually... Really, I really... But do you eventually watch all my sessions? That's what I'm saying. Do you eventually do? See, you can't no, even say, no, I gee, don't. Joseph, no, I don't. With, with people like you who needs enemies, Joseph, why don't you unsubscribe right now and dislike every one of my videos? Because what's the difference, Joseph? And no, you're laughing at no. me on top of that, huh, Joseph? No, no. So are you laughing at me or with me? No, I, I don't know what to say. I, <laughs> no, I really. So you do. laughed again. Are you laughing at me or with me, Joseph? Uh, I'm laughing with you. Not, but not I have to you. laugh in order for you to be laughing with me. And I'm not laughing. I'm crying because you make me cry, Joseph. But when you cry, I, I cry with you. Okay, that's good. And by the way, since your name Joseph, I'm going to get your brothers to sell you because you need to be sold into slavery for your sin. <laughs> what? Oh, you don't know the Bible, Joseph? No, no, no. I do. I do know, but... The Bible, Sometimes. Joseph was sold by his brother into slavery. He didn't deserve it, but you deserve to be sold into slavery because of your sin. Oh, How many brothers you got? One. I have okay. One brother. Do you have cousins? Uh, uh, cousin. Yes, yes. Okay. I want you to get 10 of your cousins and your brother to call me because I'm going to get all 11 of them to sell you into slavery to China. Okay. <laughs> so you're laughing at me again, bro. <laughs> uh, no, it's just my habit. Like, I try to... Anyway, anyway, I don't want to get you nervous. You look nervous. You know I'm playing with you, right? Yeah, yeah. And yeah, you know what? I've hey, honestly, it. Joseph, I don't care what David Wood says about you. You're, you're okay in my book. <laughs> Thank you. See? So, no, no. God, God bless you. I really you. love you. Yes. And, like, what and by doing. the way... I learned so much from you. Yes. Yeah, you learned so much from the one video you watch out of 100. I appreciate that. No, no, no. I, I, I even check out the articles. Yeah, yeah, you learn so much from the two paragraphs that you read from my article, even though it's 50 paragraphs. I like that. But, Joseph, can I ask you another question in all seriousness? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is your face hurting you? Like, do you feel pain? Your face hurting you? No, I, I heard this one. <laughs> Why, like, you hater? Yesterday. You just destroyed my <laughs> joke. Man, you're a hater. Did David Wood send you here? No, no. Okay. Anyway, I love you, man. You're okay, brother. Any other questions? I love you. I love you, too. No, no, that was it. Our maybe our comeback next week, or I don't know. Like yeah, whenever you'll, I have a you'll come back next week when you watch about ten minutes of my three-hour session, so you can ask more questions. I appreciate that. <laughs> no, I. It's okay, I don't know Joseph. What to say, I'm just pulling like, your leg. I, I always support you. I'm, I'm pulling yes. your leg, Joseph. It's okay, man. Yeah. All right. God bless you. God can bless I sing you a song Joseph. as you're about to hang up? Yes, I, I love your okay. singing. Time to say goodbye. Parnamino. Ah! All right, Joseph, did I make your day? Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Okay, buddy. God bless you, brother. Lord be with you. God bless you. Okay. Bye. Bye, bye. Say hi to Timmy. Timmy, Timmy you. <laughs> you got someone who finally said hi to you, Timmy, and he said it in a very slow, sultry voice. Is he trying to hit on you, Timmy? No, okay, okay, All right, I'll go now. Thank you. Anytime, bless you. God bless you, man. There, poor Joseph. Ooh. I scared the heck out of him. Okay, does Enrique have a question? Uh-huh. Yes, may I help you? Hello there. How are you doing, Sam? There goes my eardrums, uh, Christ, the way. You just moved. Hey, Tatiana, I thought you were going to call. Go ahead, call me on Skype. What's up, bro? Hey, Sam. Um... You know, you, you pretty much did almost everything about Islam so far. But I don't think that you've ever did a video on um, um, blacks uh, in uh, Islam. 
black yes. people in Islam. Man. Well, uh, what do you mean, like black people? That Muhammad owned black slaves and sold black slaves? And yeah. Yeah. No, I've done sessions. I've talked about it here and there, and there's stuff on the on my website. But I may do an entire session on Muhammad, the white owner of black slaves. I may do that, Lord willing. But I try to focus more on Muhammad, Christian topics, as you can see. You know, one thing I've noticed, uh, Christ away, as you ask me a question, I've noticed something. Glory to God, I've been losing weight, and hopefully I'll lose more. But as I'm shrinking, my head still stays, uh, stays the same size. So I got this huge head and these narrow shoulders. How can I cure that disease? What? Are you laughing at my pain too? <laughs> no, I'm just saying what that is. Brother, I mean, I'm looking at myself on screen. Because I lost weight, and hopefully by the grace of Jesus, I keep losing and I don't gain weight because that's my goal to get my health back. But I still notice my head is huge, and it's like this big, huge round ball on narrow shoulders. Is there any way to cure cure me of my disease so I don't look deformed and people think I'm handsome? Uh, yeah. What do I, I do? Know about that, should I, I know. Well, should I take steroids? Should I take steroids? Maybe I get more muscles. Or should I chop off my head? But anyway, go ahead, brother. You have a question? Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a question. Um, uh, you know, because I've been watching a few documentaries about how blacks are in slavery, um, yes. even today in, Lib in Libya. And um, I think it's called Merita. Uh, the two African uh, places where um, they're under slavery, under Islamic rules. So, I, I, you know, and they're converting to Islam in, in the West. So it, it's so confusing to me because that's why I said, you know, I, you know, that's why I thought you didn't do a video on. Uh, Maybe I, on I think I will. Maybe I'll even ask David Wood to do it because he gets more subscribers. I'll probably just do what Muhammad said about blacks and owning them and selling them, that he didn't abolish slavery. And he was racist in many ways because of comments he made. But I think I'll ask David Wood to talk about the current slave <clears throat> situation in islam because people don't know yeah. that even right now as we speak muslims are enslaving people especially black people because they're following the example of their prophet so i'll probably do that yeah god one but no and, other and, questions um, go ahead come and ask me bro and by the way i just want to comment to this guy smith smith the hadiths say that arab muhammad it says white armpits the white thigh and that white man over there it's in the hadith we didn't write the hadith we didn't make it up but go ahead, man. Go ahead, bro. Not only that, there's a lot of uh, Muslims that are um, forced converting Africans. Yes. In uh, fact, where do you yeah. think the, the white slave owners got the African slaves from? From the Muslims who were selling Thanks. them, right? Thank you. And yep. people don't talk 100%. about that. When they went and bought slaves <laughs> out of Africa, who was selling the slaves to the white, white man? The Muslims who had enslaved the Africans. Thank you. Yeah. A lot of people don't know that. A lot of people don't know that. It yeah. was the Muslims that was actually selling uh, the black slaves to the, to the yeah. Europeans and so forth. Yeah, I mean, dude, I mean, think about it. They were buying the slaves from someone when they went to Africa. Who were they buying from? The Muslims who enslaved the Africans because they looked down upon blacks because Muhammad did. This is a fact. I'm not making it up. So glory to Jesus Christ. He's exposing Muhammad as a white racist son of the devil who owned black slaves and sold black slaves and never abolished that practice, which is why Muslims kept, kept that practice till the present day. And I'll do a session. I'll quote the Hadith because I'd rather quote Muhammad doing it because then they'll say, well, what these Muslims are doing later goes against the teachings of Islam. No, your prophet was a white racist owner of black slaves. So anyway. And, and uh, just a uh, last statement. I'm uh, yeah, kind of like a question statement. I'm making a. I want to make a documentary on uh, on Allah and, and how Allah is a pagan sure. demon, Absolutely. right? And I just want to ask you. I heard CP said it, but I, I'm not really sure if he if he if he actually did because it was live. He said that all Muslims have a, a jinn next to them, like a demon next to them, and, and he quoted us one of the surah or something about how Allah was. I mean, not Allah. Muhammad was possessed by a by a jinn. Okay, so, what, what I did don't know if you say? No, well, there's the hadith that Muhammad thought he was much new and jinn possessed. That's coming, but what did he say again, CP? What did the Christian prince say? He said something about all Muslims have a jinn. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's um, called the Karin. The Karin, and that's in one of my articles. The Karin, I may be mispronouncing it. 
the Quran talks about every Muslim having a jinn, but specifically the, a, a cat and that uh, misguides him. Yeah, that's that's in the the Quran and Hadith. Let me see if I can. Well, let me get you the article later. I'll send it to you in the comment section. Yes, that is all. I'll do a session on that as well. Guys, if you don't know, the Quran and Hadith teach every person, every Muslim has a karin. Transliteration, Q-A-R-I-N or Q-A-R-E-E-N. I've seen some people translate as karin. But this is a <clears throat> entity that misguides people and tries to influence them to do what is evil in the sight of Allah. Yep, a karim. Yeah, that's in the Quran and that's in the Hadith. And the Quran even says that Allah is going to ask their karim, what did he do? See? Amazing. Yeah. Anyway, Sam, thank you so much, brother. I appreciate it. Anytime, so much. bro. Anytime thank you have questions, comment. I'll get you the article. I'll send it to you, Lord willing, by the grace of God. Thank you. Bye. All right. God bless you. Tatiana, you started World War III. You said you're joking. Everyone thinks that you want to call me. Don't be scared. You got a question? The monk, what I got? Don't be scared. We got some callers here. Let's see. All right. Hopefully, they'll get relevant questions so I can answer instead of just turning into a comedy session. Hey, man. Why is your Skype up? Dude, look at these arms. I got no muscles. <laughs> Did you know they don't call me the muscles from Brussels? Zion? We're marching to Zion. Oh, the beautiful Zion. Okay, go ahead. Sometimes I don't get your sense of humor. Are you attacking me, sir? No, no, no. I'm not. Timmy gets my sense of humor, and that's all that matters. But what's your question? Go ahead. Um, my question is, when Muslims, when I talk to Muslims, they always attack me with, with how the ending of... What? What was it? Was he the Mark Luke Chant? The, my friend, the ending you, of one of the gospels. You're gonna hurt me now. You're gonna make me cry. Did you watch the sessions with James Snap on my YouTube channel, where he shows the historical textual evidence that the longer ending of Mark is a genuine scripture written by Mark, refuting the uh, arguments that it's not? No. Well, where is it? Wait, wait, hold uh, on. You mean you're like Joseph, who only watches ten percent of my videos, and when you watch a video, you only watch twenty minutes of it? No, I actually watch all of it. Oh, good. So then if you go on YouTube just two weeks ago, I had James Snap on refuting James White's misinformation on the longer ending of Mark, Mark 16 verses 9 to 20. And a couple of months ago, he did another session. It's there on my YouTube. You James Snap, Mark, it's there. James Snap. Yeah, it's uh, there. Oh, Snap. You're going to get Snap, sucker. Snappy Snap. Oh, Snap. Huh? How many, how many weeks ago or days ago? Brother, you know, the search engine doesn't care how long. You just put James Snap, it's there, bro. You know, it's okay here. Yeah, Go to my YouTube channel. There's a search engine. Put in Snap, and Snap, it'll be right there. Who cares how long? That's why we have search engines. Hold on. Timmy, can you help this man use the search engine on my YouTube channel? You know, Timmy, you don't need to know the date. You just put in Snap, and Snap, like that, it going to be in your face, sucker. How do you spell his? How do you spell Snap, like? S N A P P. You got it James now. Is, okay. The, okay. What do you see now? What do you see? James Snap and the longer ending of Mark. There I is said, your prayers answered. God answering you by raising up people like Snap to refute these arguments. And also, what what about um what about that scripture where Jesus forgives the adulterous woman? Do you see see this is where hold on, Timmy? Do you know when he put in Snap, he's gonna see another session by Snap on that very section, the woman caught in adultery. It's right there if he looks. He's gonna say John seven fifty three eight eleven, the longer uh, the woman caught in adultery. Timmy, you see it? Timmy sees it. Do you see it? It's right there. When he put in Snap, what videos do you see? Uh, James Snap refused James White misinformation. Okay, go to the next one. Mark. What's the next one? Uh, Bart Ehrman calls James White debate wait, challenge. Wait, okay, Mr. hold on, brother. Hold on, Timmy. 
I didn't say go to YouTube search engine. I said go to my channel. My channel has a search engine for my channel. My channel, Timmy. Not search on YouTube. My channel, Timmy. Hold on, hold on. let me help you. Buddy. Brother, you're going to make me retire from apologetics and go and deliver pizza for a living. Is that okay? You're laughing at me too, bro. I saw the pictures. <laughs> I actually, actually really your sense of humor. I actually oh, like but it. you said you didn't figure my sense of humor out, you little sinner. You know, that's 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 for everybody. That's what makes it kind of okay now. Here, oh, here, I just went on my search engine. Here's the link. Tell me if you see it. I didn't say YouTube, I said my channel. Every channel has a search engine. You see, click on it. You're going to see the top right here for the rest of Here it is. Yeah, I already found it. Thanks. Okay, you found uh, it? So glory to Jesus for men like him snap. I just raise them up to show you the overwhelming historical proof. These are authentic scripture inspired by the Spirit. So listen, take notes. And there I give links to his books, ebooks that he's written on it, and his blogs and other videos he's done. So you got all the information right there. Go study it. Listen to the entire sessions, even though with me you only listen to 10% of me. That's okay. I'll forgive you, but not for... For too long. I really don't, but I really watch a lot of you. I if wait, wait. If, you mean if, there's if a I lot of me to watch? Me. Wait, wait, hold on. You just attacked me. There's a lot of me to watch. What are you saying? Because I'm so fat. There's a lot of me to watch. <laughs> Why, brother? Why would you attack me this way? I thought we were friends. Okay, okay. I By watch way, a lot of your videos. What's your real I name? Watch. If you don't want to mention it, that's okay. But I mean, I won't, you don't have to give your last name. What's your real name? Is Zion. It is. Yeah. Man, I thought you were just calling yourself Zion after the hill in Jerusalem. So they called you Zion? Yeah. They, so my, I'm a French guy, right? So it's... We oui, oui, monsieur, s'il vous plaît. <laughs> it's Herman Zion Wolf. That's, that's Wait, wait, wait. What did you call me? What did I call you? No, no, say it again. Asman what? No, no. My name is Herman it's a French name, Herman Zion Wuss. Did you call me a wuss? <laughs> of course I didn't. Okay, I'm just kidding, because I thought you were something. Because I don't know, man. You're speaking. Wow, dude, come on now. Okay, now, by the way, your name is Asman? Herman. Oh, Herman? Spell it. E R M. -E. A A N. No, I said spell it. It is I T. What are they teaching you in school? I said spell it I T, bro. But anyway, you have another question? Go ahead. <laughs> okay, but I have I have questions, but the, I don't I don't think they're too relevant to the topic. What uh, if this is Q and A? It can be on any topic. Okay. Okay, it's kind of relevant because because I get into debates with Muslims about this, but. Um, uh, what is, is, is God a masculine God or a yeah. feminine God or neither? Yeah, well, what you'll be told by Christians today is that he's neither male nor female. Let me now tell you, if you're going to be faithful to scripture, he asked a good question, by the way, guys. Is God masculine, feminine, or neither? Let me tell you what the scripture teaches. This is where Christians are going to get confused. So be careful and don't misrepresent me and don't misquote me. Because I already have heresy hunters that are trying to condemn me as a heretic. You can be masculine without having to be a physical being with physical genitalia. You understand what I'm saying? Masculinity is not limited to physical beings with physical body parts. Okay, you understand what I'm saying, right? Okay. You the understand? Skeptics, Cause, okay. They, it's, uh -huh. What happened? Did you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, 100%. Okay. So you I can be agree. masculine without being a physical being with physical body parts. So God the Father is masculine without being physical and having physical body parts. How do I know? Because before creation, he is the Father. Before creation, Jesus is the Son. He didn't choose to become a father or refer to himself as a father because of creation. So if you believe... The eternal father, the eternal son, along with the eternal spirit, then you believe before creation in eternity, 
The father is the father. He wasn't the mother. The son is the son. He wasn't the daughter. Nor do you believe that these are simply terms that God adopts in order to communicate to certain cultures so that in a patriarchal culture, he'll say he's the father, but in a matriarchal culture, he'll say he's the mother so that the goddess so loved the world that she gave her one and only daughter. That doesn't work like that. But, okay, so my wife says that um, that the only reason for gender is to reproduce. No. Is to procreate. Say Since prove God it. God doesn't need to procreate. Prove it. That's what that's what. See, you're not listening. Prove in the scripture that's the only reason why you have gender. Well, I think she just looks at life around her and she is my brother that Joseph. It's the same. Oh, said, my brother Ahmad. I don't care how I see life and perceive it. I care what God says. Okay, so in glory, when human beings will no longer reproduce, they will no longer have gender, they'll be genderless? No. So you're still going to have gender distinctions? Yeah, that's what I've been saying. I, I, I said that there's, there's uh, male and female angels. So yes, there is. I, but I, forget that, that part. Let's go with their reasoning. In glory, in the new heaven, new earth. When you're now glorified and won't reproduce, you won't have sex and have children. Are you going to still be male or you're going to be genderless? I would, I would say I'd still be male. Man, the fact that you're even thinking about it is scaring me. So you're going to change? You, you won't be you anymore? No, I'm going to be me. So then is, are you a male or female? Male. Okay, so are you still going to be male when you are glorified and made immortal. Yes. Okay. So that's not true. There are gender distinctions just for reproduction. Because God could have designed it where males reproduce. He could have said two males and I will create males to have the capacity to reproduce. But what if, what if someone thinks that when we go to heaven, we'll stay the same, but we'll have no gender, no genitals, no nothing. You know? See, you, you just made the same mistake I said not to make. Who told you that's your genitalia that defines your gender? No, no, but that's what that's what someone would say. And I, I just answered that someone that's... that you made up in your mind. Who told you that genitalia defines your gender? So let's assume that a man is castrated. His genitalia is cut off. He's no longer male? No, he's still male. Okay, so you see, these arguments are weak. They're but bad. then they say, what makes someone male? That's what they, okay. that's what they say. If uh, not. Timmy? Timmy, I don't know what else I can tell this guy, that male identity has nothing to do with genitalia. What makes something male is because God defines, this is male, this is female. So now, when you ask me what exactly makes you male, it's because you look at me as a man, I have certain physical traits that identify me as male. But that doesn't mean that in a spiritual realm, that when you have male and female entities, that they must have the same traits I do to define their gender. Because that's a different reality, but gender still exists. It's like saying, what makes God male? He doesn't have a body. So well, how do I know he's male? Because he tells me he's the father. Yeah, and then some pastors say that he just, they, he, he uses... The father to show a good image because so you mean if he's talking to a matriarchal society, then he'll start saying that he's the goddess and he's the mother. So if he That's goes, what, basically, according to what these these pastors are saying, yeah, then that means we can't know God truly as He is. God only adopts roles and speaks in a language that doesn't truly identify who He is by nature, because He's simply going to speak in a way. To accommodate that culture. So if a culture is patriarchal where the male is dead, he'll speak as a male. But if he's talking to a matriarchal society, he will then say, I am the goddess and I love you so much. I gave you my one and only daughter. So that means you can never and truly know God. And since since there's, um, there's, I don't know if this is true. I just heard this before. Since there's clothing in having like robes like to cover up would there be nakedness forget the 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 genitals 
but would there be nakedness without the robe? Yeah, well. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. The clothing represents in scripture the righteousness and the purity of believers. Revelation 19, 7 to 9. What has clothing got to do with if I'm not clothed, I'll be naked? Oh, sorry. Okay, Michael, I'm sorry I'm not clothed yet. <laughs> he said, don't look at me. Hush, silly. No, the clothing represents the purity and the righteousness of the believers who are glorified in the presence of God. Go to Revelation 19, 7 to 9 and read it for me. Galatians? Did I say Galatian or Revelation? Maybe you're right. I don't know. Did I, I thought I said Revelation. Sorry, I didn't hear you. But I don't know. Did I say Revelation? Like, now you got me coming. See, you're playing with my mind, dude. <laughs> man, man, homie. My mind's playing tricks on me, homie. Revelation 19, 7 to 9. Read that for me. Razzles is another hater because he's a Syrian. But he still says he's Chaldean, even though the name Chaldean was given to them in the 1500s. So because he's a hater, I don't acknowledge that he's Chaldean, but he's truly a Syrian. He took your side against me. What a hater, dude. All right. Anyway, read out loud for me. Revelation 19, 7 to 9. Let us be glad, rejoice, and give him glory. Because the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his bride has prepared herself. Yep. Continue. Which part of seven to nine wasn't clear? The seven or the eight or the nine? Sorry, it doesn't show the, Let's try this again. the numbers. Revelation 19, seven to nine. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Read it. Please. She was given fine linen. Um, it's right in front of you. You're reading it. She was given fine linen clothing, which is what? Bright and pure for the fine linen represents righteous acts of the saints okay you see the linen represents what the clothing represents what right and pure what does it represent righteous, righteous acts of the saints okay now go to zechariah 3 verses 3 to 4. zechariah 3 verses 3 to 4. okay no, actually, no, the exactly. French, by the way, as you go to Zechariah 3, verse 3 or 4, I don't know if you guys know this. When the French celebrate their victory against the Muslims, the Moors, they this, they came up with the croissant. Have you ever wondered why the croissant is shaped like a crescent? Because they were mocking the Moors, the Muslims that they conquered, by making croissant and eating it as a sign that they destroyed and ate up the crescent moon of Islam. Did you guys know that? You guys didn't know that, right? Mm -hmm. That's why now stock up on croissants. Croissant is a sign of the victory over against the Muslims because they made the croissant as a shape of a crescent. Look at it. That's why it's called croissant, crescent. This, the Islamic symbol, the symbol of the Muslim invaders, the crescent moon. And so they would eat croissants as a sign. We've, we ate you up, baby. This is a fact. I'm not making it up. So now, guys, all you Christians, stock up on croissants and eat it to your heart's desire. Anyway. Okay. Okay. You know, the Viennese, right? But it was in light of what? The French, right? French? Can someone Google it? Check Google? Anyway, hopefully, I'm going by memory, but hopefully I'm not wrong. All right, now read Zechariah 3, verses now Joshua was dressed with filthy clothes as he stood before the angel. So the angel of the Lord spoke spoke to uh, what's it called? Spoke to those standing before him, take off his filthy clothes. Then he said, See, I have removed your iniquity from you, and I will clothe you with festive robe. Okay, so the filthy clothes represent sin, right? Before yeah. the rapture, Joseph, are you seeing it? Filthy clothes represent what? Sin. And then when he removes it and he gives them festal clothes, those clothes represent what? Purity. 
obviously, if he's removing his filthy robes, which is sin, and he's clothing him with festal robes, what do those robes represent? Um, the righteousness of the saints. Joseph, are you were you sent as a spy to just like bother me? What did it say in verse four? It's in front of you. I'm thinking you were sent by someone to just start trouble. So what did verse four say? It's in front of you, buddy. Read it, please. No. When he removed his filthy garments, that was a sign that God removed what? His iniquity. Yes. You see, I called you Joseph because I want someone to sell you into slavery too. But anyway, then when he puts festal garments on him, what does that represent? Righteousness. Yeah, that he's forgiven and he's now pure, right? Yeah. Okay, so you understand the garments represent what? You are pure and righteous, right? Yeah, so this is this is not a, a analogy. To what? I'm saying like this is the forgiveness of God or is this literally talking about clothing? Why does it have to be either or? Why do you why does your mind think it's either this or that? Why can't it be both that he clothes you and your clothing is a sign you are righteous and pure? Why is it either or? I'm just asking questions. No, and I'm answering that. you by asking. You know, Jesus answered by asking questions, right? Mm -hmm. Why is it either or? Why can't it be both and? I think it can. I just I'm asking on, on other people's behalf, like. I know that people brother, are but you got the question. answer. You got the answer, brother. You know I love you, man. I'm, I, I got to I'm gonna quit apologetics after this. You got your answer. It's both. Okay. And uh, regarding the moon topic, can you go to Revelation seven? We're not done yet, Joseph. Why do I keep calling okay. you Joseph? Because it's easier calling you Joseph than calling you Arahman. Joseph. Should I call you, you Arahman or Joseph or Zion? Zion. Well, you know what? When I when you say Zion, you're convincing me this is one big matrix. I feel like I'm in the matrix right now. What? Have you watched the movie Matrix, Joseph? Yeah. Okay. Do you remember the city Zion? Was it an abandoned city? That was a city. They were free. They were free from the matrix, from the machine. And these were the people who were living in Zion, right? Uh huh. So when I think of your name Zion, I feel like I'm in the matrix. I need to disconnect. Okay. Okay, but anyway, uh, go to Revelation seven. We're not done yet. Go to Revelation seven. It's taking a while seven. to get these jokes. I hope you get it before the rapture. Go to Revelation seven, verses nine to thirteen. This is now the seventh version of the matrix. You know that, right? Mm -hmm. After this, I looked and there was a vast multitude from every nation, tribe, people, and language, which no one could number standing before the throne and before the lamb. They were clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands and they cried out in a loud voice salvation belongs to our god who is seated on the throne and to the lamb all angels stood around the throne along with the elders and the four living creatures they fell face down before the throne and worshiped god saying amen blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and strength to be our God forever and ever. Amen. Okay, now, I want you to start paying attention to 14 and 15. Verse 14 and 15. Read that. Okay. I said to him, sir, you know, then he told me, these are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. So their white robes represent what? You saw a great multitude from every people, language, tribe, 
standing before the throne, praising God and the Lamb, and they were in white robes. Their white robes represented what? Revelation 7, 15. For this reason, they so are... So why, why were their white robes God. white? Pardon me? Why were their robes white? Because they are washed in the blood of Christ. And so that made them what? Worthy and pure and righteous enough to stand in heaven, right? Verse 15? Correct. Okay, so did you get your answer what the white robes point to? Yes. And so the reason why they're clothed is not so much if they're not clothed, you're going to see them naked. They're clothed because the clothing represents they are righteous and pure and have been purified by Jesus and therefore worthy enough to stand in God's presence. So it's not so much, it's symbolic. It can be actual clothing, but the clothing represents something. So they're actually clothed, but they're clothed because the clothing is telling you something about them. W would you be able to take off your clothes in heaven? Dude, why don't you just ask me, would I be able to sleep in heaven and have a bed and go swimming? What kind of questions are these? Questions. All right, brother. God bless you. Okay. I think we have a Muslim customer. Let's see. Yo, Hassan, you a Muslim? Yo. After after seeing those guns, I don't think I am. No, seriously, what are you? Because it says Hassan Ahmed. Are you Muslim? Yeah, well, not in my heart, no. Oh, okay. All right, good. Because I don't know. What's up? You have some questions, my friend? But you got to have your Bible Quran open to read for me if you have questions. It makes it easier for me. Okay, uh, I'll pull it out. Okay, speak louder. Uh, what's up? Um, just give me one second. By the way, if you guys are getting bored, I can shut down. Do you want me to continue? Because I got a few more people that want to ask me questions. Do you want me to shut down or you guys want me to Because it's, I'm here for you guys. I can shut down and go do my errands for the day. All right, well, pray the Lord Jesus keeps us strong and we get more people in. Go ahead, bro. Go ahead, ask me, ask me your question. What's your question? All right, so I wanted to know more about uh, women in Islam. A little louder, man, because your mom. I want, yeah. I want to know a little bit more about women in Islam. What exactly do you want to know? Just like uh, like uh, how they're not treated well, they don't have any rights, oh. etc. It's not they don't have any rights. That that would be unfair. There are the mo Women are given rights, but... The question is, are their rights equal to that of men? Obviously not. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you, when you say Islam, so you're broadening it to go beyond the Quran as well, right? Yes. Okay. Well, you looked at chapter 4, verse 24, right? Do you want to open it yes. up for me? Oh, well, do you, okay. Well, you read it. Okay. Now, the historical situation of chapter 4, verse 24, in Surah An nisa chapter 4, verse 24, the historical situation is, as you saw from Sunan Abu Dawood, number 2150, where there we were told, we were told that a group of beautiful women were taken captive and their husbands were alive and Muhammad's companions felt ashamed because their husbands are alive, man, we can't sleep with them. That would be adultery, let alone rape. And Allah said, no, hey, they're, they're your right hand's possession. You own them. You are free to sleep with them even though their husbands are alive. So I always ask Muslims, be honest with me. Would any woman who is a decent woman, and when I say mother, they think I'm insulting them. No, the reason why I say mother is so it could sink in. I want the impact to hit. If your mother was taken captive, because this is what it's saying, because these women that were taken captive, they were someone's mother, right? Someone's sister, someone's daughter, someone's wife. So I make it personal so it can sink in. So shock, they wake up. Would your mother be okay having her captor have sex with her with your father still alive? Of course not. But Allah and his messenger said it doesn't matter whether she's okay with it because once you take her captive, she's yours. Mm -hmm. 
So this is adultery and rape. Adultery and rape. Now, with that said, if you have your Quran open, can you go to chapter 2 of the Quran? Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 223. Chapter 2, verse 223. Chapter 2, verse 223. Or if you can read it for me, my friend. Can you hear me still? I don't know if you're there. Yeah, I'm right here. Yeah, sorry, yeah, okay. right yeah. Read it for me if you can yeah. when you get there. Your wives are a place of sowing, of seed for you. You come to your place of a lot of terrible. That is a terrible. Translation. Your wife is a what? A place of sowing of seed. Uh, here we go. Our guys, remind me before I shut down the session, give you links to the articles I wrote in Women in Islam. So God, by the grace of God, I'm going to give it to him and you. Okay, let me read a better translation. Chapter 2 of the Quran, verses 223. Your women are a tillage for you. They are your tilth, your field. So come unto your tillage as you wish. Come unto your tillage as you wish. <clears throat> and forward for your souls. And fear God, Allah, and know that you shall meet him. Give thou good tidings to the believers. Literally, the Quran says, women are your field, your tillage, your tilth. Plow into them the way you want. In other words, the plain reading of the Quran, if you just take this verse, the Quran is saying, your women are your field. Plow them any way you want in any position. Now, you'll never find the Quran saying to the woman, men are your, your tillage, your field, plow into them. They're your property, you can own them. Now, let me read some of the hadiths. Now, just the Quran itself says, women are your field, they're your tilth, plow into them. And if I give you historical context, it gets really disgusting. But before I do that, let me read, right? The, the reason this passage was given. Guys, are you ready? Sal Bukhari, volume 6, number 51. Sal Bukhari, volume 6, number 51. Nariya Jabr. Jews used to say, if one has sexual intercourse with his wife from the back, then she will deliver a squint-eyed child. So this verse was revealed. Your wives are a tilth unto you, so go to your tilth when or how you will. Okay, you see why this passage was revealed? The Jews say you shouldn't have sex from behind. Because then if she gets pregnant, she's going to give birth to a squint-eyed child. And Allah said, plow into them the, you, the way you want. From the back, from the front, you're free to do what you want. It's your choice. Did that sink in or no? Right? Did that make sense or no? Okay, now, let me find this other narration. Right? And so I don't know. Okay. You ready? I'm going to read this narration for you. It's a long one, but it's worth reading. Okay. Okay, let me see if I can get it for you. You know what? Let me just get on my phone a second. I'm trying to. Yeah, hold on. Let me do this. Let me go to here. Let me get discussing, guys. Bear with me. Let me go to Alphabet's here. Uh, let me show you the reason why, quotations mark, this was revealed. All right, hold on. Let me get it for you guys. I'm going to go to altafsir.com. Let me just go for you. 223. Here you go. Let me get it for you. Al Wahdi. Okay, you ready? This is from altafsir.com, Asbab al Nuzul by Al Wahdi. Asbab al Nuzul by Al Wahdi. You guys ready? Women, are you ready to convert to Islam? Okay. Your women are a till for you. Abu Bakr Ahmed ibn al-Hassan al-Qadi informed us. Hajib ibn Mahmed, Abdul Rahim ibn Munib, Sufyan ibn Uyayna, ibn al Qadir, that he heard Jabir ibn Abdullah say, the Jews used to say that whoever penetrates the vagina, sorry, I I'm reading it, the vagina of his wife from a back position, the child born as a result of this intercourse will be cross-eyed. To deny this, Allah exalted as he revealed, your women are a tilth for you to cultivate. So go to your tilth as you will. This was narrated by Bukhari from Abu Nuyam 
and by Muslim from Abu Bakr ibn Abi Shayba, and by Abu Nuaim, and Abu Bakr related it from Sufyan. And I just read that. Now, but wait, it gets a little better for you guys. Muhammad ibn Ibrahim ibn Muhammad ibn Yahya informed us. Abu Sayyid Ismail ibn Ahmad al Khalali. Abdul, Abdullah ibn Zayd al Bajari. Sorry, guys, this is the Sunnah. Abu Quraib al Muharba. Muharba, uh, Muhammad ibn Ishaq. Aban ibn Muslim. Mujahid, who said, oh my goodness. I read the Quran out of memory from beginning to end under three times. Stopping each verse, ask him about its meaning until he got to this verse. Your women are a tilth for you to cultivate, cultivate. So go to your tilth as you will. He said, "Watch this. The men of this part of Quraysh used to have sexual intercourse with their wives while the latter lay down on their front. Talk about a sick, filthy religion. They enjoyed their wives from the front and back positions." When they migrated to Medina and married the woman of the helpers, the Ansari, they tried to do with them what they were in the habit of doing in Mecca. Now, guys, understand the context. The men from Mecca used to sleep with their women from behind and front, back and front. When they went to Medina, the women there were not used to this. So when these Muslims married these women, they wanted to go from behind, from the back. Now, watch here. Watch this. You asked for it, man. All right. But the women of the helpers objected, saying, this is something we do not do before. Don't do this to us. We don't do this. The talk spread until it reached the Messenger of Allah. Then revealed, he, Allah, revealed, your women are till for you to cultivate, to go to your tilth as you will. He said, if you want, you can penetrate your eyes from a back position or from a front position, or if you want, from a kneeling down position. He meant by this, penetrating their women's vaginas from any of these positions. He said, go to your tilt as you will. This was narrated by Al-Hakim Abu Abdullah in his Sahih from Abu Zakaria Al-Anbari from Muhammad Ibn Abdul Salam from Ishaq Ibn Ibrahim from Al-Muharaba. Did you guys catch it? I'm going to stop there. I got a lot more. But you understand what this passage just said? It said, you woman, if you're a Muslim woman, you have no choice. If your husband wants to go from back or front... You got to just say, yes, master, you have no say so. And there are certain narrations attributed to Ibn Umar, where he even used this verse to condone anal sex. And there are Muslims say, no, those are weak narrations. Anal penetration is forbidden. This is how sick and filthy this religion is. You want me to give you more, brother, or what do you want to do? I think that's a solid one <laughs> for now. Okay. So um, let me get you the link. Well, let me get you a link to this one. Here's the link for you guys to read. The Al-Tafsir. Here it goes. That's one. I'm going to send it to you now. Just click on that link. You can read it for yourself. I'm going to send it to you, and I'm going to give you the articles now. Are you ready? Here you go, friend. That's for you. I'm going to get to the articles. You ready for the articles? Yes, sir. All right. Yeah, uh, friend, uh, if you want to follow Islam, it's a re religion of oppression of women, degrading them as sexual objects. Here's part one. When you go there, it will give you the links to the subsequent ones. Part one. It is four parts, but here's part one. When you guys click on it, it will take you to part two, three, four. Audio is good, friend. Audio is good. I don't know what you're talking about. So I hope that answers your question. you have a follow-up? And there's one verse about obedience to your husband. Where? I can't remember which one it was. That's um, chapter 4, verse 34, right? And, where, and then if you feel yes, rebellion, that you beat so. them? That uh, you beat them. It's chapter 4, verse 34. Because men are superior to women and have an advantage over them. And if a man fears rebellion on the part of his wife, he admonishes her, separates her from, her, from his bed, and beats her. Yeah, that's clear. That's in the Quran and the Hadiths. It is explicit, clear. And it's all documented in those series of rebuttals. And there's one more verse I can't remember off the top of my head. But I think it's uh, chapter 3. Or chapter 4, sorry. What does it say? But it's... Uh, um, let me find it one second. It? Yeah, well, give me the gist seven. of it. What are you talking about? Is my sound good for most of you? Some people claim it, complain about my sound. <clears throat> I, that's something I can't control. Yeah, can you give me an idea? What, yeah, like, what? Um, 
it's like obedience to your husband, but then they kind of change it to saying uh, obedient. The obedience that they're talking about is obedience to God. No, that's not true. It's uh, the verses that you have in mind will be chapter four, verse thirty-four of the Quran. That's one, and then you go to chapter two of the Quran, verse two twenty-eight. Chapter two, verse two twenty-eight. Surah Al-Baqarah, number two twenty-eight. Those are the two verses, and it's not about obedience to Allah. Obeying your husband is obeying Allah. That's what it is. In fact, here, let me show you something. I didn't read this hadith, but let me read it for you guys. Let me read this hadith. Let me listen. Okay. This comes from Sahil Bukhari, volume 4, number 460. Sahil Bukhari, volume 4, number 460. Guys, please listen. Narrate Abu Huraira. Allah's apostle said, if a husband calls his wife to his bed, i.e. to have sexual relations, and she refuses and causes him to sleep in anger, the angels will curse her till morning. The angels will curse any wife who refuses to sleep with her husband when he beckons her to the bed. So that's what it is. Obeying your husband is obeying Allah. If you don't obey your husband, you don't obey Allah, Allah and his angels curse you. Here's another one. Sahih Muslim, number 3367. Sahih Muslim, number 3367. Now watch this. Abu Huraira, Huraira reported Allah's messenger saying, by him in whose hand is my life, when a man calls his wife to his bed and she does not respond, the one, meaning Allah, who is in the heavens, is displeased with her until her husband is pleased with her. Did you catch it? The pleasure of Allah is connected with a wife pleasing her husband. So women, you better have sex with your husbands. If you don't, Allah will be disgusted with you, displeased with you, and the angels will curse you. There you go, my friend. Thank Did you. I answer your question? Yes, and I might be calling back soon. Anytime. Yeah, Three more questions and we'll go right live. All right? Yep. Feel free to call me and make sure you have your Quran and Bible ready. We'll answer any questions. So if you have any more, let me know. If not, when you're ready, let me know and we'll answer them by the grace of Jesus Christ, our Lord. All right. Thank you so much. Take care, buddy. Take care. Okay, a few more calls. You guys sure you want me to continue? Okay. What's this place, man? Why are you calling my number, man? Why be like this, man? Let's see. What do you like this, man? Hey, Leonardo, you had a Hello. question? You had a question? Hello. Hello. Question? You had a question? Leonardo. Hello. Yes, hello. Leonardo, you there? Yes, yes, yes. I'm Can here. you hear me, Leonardo, before 20... 21? Yes, yes, I, I heard you. Okay, what's the question, my friend, Leonardo? Uh, uh, is there a Bible verse that uh, tells us that the body of the apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ are now in heaven and with glorified body, just like his mother? Uh, you confused the heck out of me. When it comes to his blessed mother, there's nothing in the Bible that says she's in heaven bodily. That's tradition. So what are you asking me exactly? The, the apostle of the Lord. If the the if apostle of the Lord? Right now. Oh, I thought you said the body of our Lord. The, the apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. If they are in heaven and if they have a glorified body. Why would they have a glorified body when the body is only going to be glorified at the resurrection? When they died, their bodies went back to the dust. Who told you they're there in physical bodies? Uh, well, I uh, read in the, uh, I think it's Ezekiel, where the, the graves will be opened. And that didn't and happen then, at the time of Christ with the apostles, because that happens when Jesus returns. Uh, then in John, I think after Jesus died, uh, Leonardo, you're not listening. Are you? Le Leonardo, yes, yes. Leonardo, yes, you're not sir. listening. Yes, sir. Brother, you're not listening. Let me try this again. 
What you're referring okay. to is Matthew 27, 52 to 53. That's not the apostles. They didn't die. How are you applying that to the apostles? That's number one. That resurrection in Matthew 27, 52 to 53 is talking about resurrection of people who had currently died, who came to life like Lazarus, only to die again. That's number two. Number three, the resurrection of the bodies of those who died will take place when Jesus returns. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 18. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 18. So the apostles, when they died, their bodies went to the ground and their spirits entered the presence of Jesus. When he comes, he will resurrect their bodies. You with me there? Yes, yes. I can't hear you now. Louder. Hello. I thought that uh, they come up there the graves and then they um, went to the holy city and so. No. Uh, First Thessalonians I, I 4, 13, 18 says, those who've died in Christ will be raised from their graves when he mm. descends and comes down. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, right? The, those after, I uh, know, uh, after the graves open is that pertains to the first resurrection and the revelation which one you're talking or about which graves different. open which graves of where which book uh, uh i think it, uh john john says I nothing about john. a resurrection of the graves taking place at the time of christ so what are you talking about why you gonna search whatever is say it again uh, I'm going to search for the... There's nothing the in John. Words. So what are you referring to? The one I just mentioned, Matthew 27, 52 to 53, which I mentioned? Oh, yes, yes. That's, that's okay. it. What that's has that got to Matthew do with... Tennessee. Okay, now, brother, you know Peter was alive when that happened, yes. right? Yes, yes. So how can that refer to Peter being resurrected when he hasn't died? Uh, yes. I just, just came into conclusion that if those from the Old Testament, um, um, those from their graves, so... Yeah, but it doesn't uh, say that either. Charlie uh, Saba, Charlie Saba, you keep calling me, I'm going to block you, Charlie Saba. Call me again so I can block you because you're impatient. Matthew 27, 52, 53 is not speaking about the Old Testament saints. You're misreading it. Do you have your Bible with you? Yes, I do. Open I up Matthew open 27 the, uh, and speak loud and read 52 to 53. Matthew 27, 52 to 53. Speak loud. Okay. And the graves were open, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. Okay. Now, listen to it says their bodies. If it's Old Testament saints... Their bodies would have decomposed. It was a Jewish custom practice at the time of Christ. That when someone died, a year later they would go and collect his bones and put it in a box called an ossuary to preserve the bones. Whoever these were, their bodies had not decayed and decomposed, right? Mm, yes, yes. That means these are holy men who believed in Jesus, holy men and women, that had died recently, just like Lazarus. You remember Lazarus when he died? Yes. Okay. If they were Old Testament saints, their body would have decomposed. They would have been bones, if bones, if you could even find the bones. And it was the practice of the Jews in the first century that when they buried someone, they'd come back a year later to collect the bones because the body had decayed and decomposed. And they would put the bones in an ossuary, a box, for preservation for the resurrection. For example, if you go to Exodus 13, go to Exodus 13. You ready? Exodus 13. Yeah, yes, read yes, Exodus 13, Exodus verses 13. 19 and 20. Exodus 13, verses 19 and 20. Okay. Read that for me. Hope you guys are learning from this question. Exodus 13, verses 19 and 20. And Moses took the bones of Joseph with him. For he had straightly sworn the children of Israel, saying, 
God will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my bones away hence with you. Okay, now wait. What did he take up? What did Moses take up? Bones. Of who? Brother, if you're going to be this slow, I'm going to have to hang Israel. up. I'm going to hang up on you if you're this slow. Read. It's in front of your eyes. Whose bones? Children of Israel. Yeah, you got to go, brother. Uh, don't call me again. I'm going to give you another chance to get it right. Whose bones uh, did he take? Bones of Joseph. Okay, sorry, so, sorry. Bones so of I have Joseph. to do that. I have to scare you because you're taking too slow. You're This is how you're saying. The bones of the children of Joseph. I got to scare you a little bit because I'm going to hang up and block you if you don't get it, right? Come on, move, move, move. Under, under, right? Okay. Whose bones did he take? <laughs> Whose bones did bones he take? Joseph, Joseph. Okay. Bones Notice Joseph. Joseph doesn't have a body anymore. He's only bones, right? Yes. Okay. You see, Joseph's body is gone. It's only bones, right? Yes, yes. So then how can Matthew 27 refer to the body of Joseph when he had no body, he was bones? Oh. You got it? Yes. Now go to Second Kings, Second Kings chapter thirteen, verses twenty to twenty-one. Second Kings chapter thirteen, verses twenty to twenty-one. Logos, you see, brother, how I scared you. Now you woke up, right? By scaring you, you woke up, right? Yes. Man, Second Kings chapter thirteen, verses twenty to twenty-one. Ah, chapter thirteen. Read for me. Read it slowly and loud. 13. Yeah. Chapter 13, 20 to 21. Yeah, 20 to 21. Slowly and loud. Okay. And Elisha died, and they buried him. And the bands of the Moabites invaded the land at the coming in of the year. And it came to pass, as they were burying a man, that behold, they spied a band of men, and they cast the band, they, and they cast the man into the sepulcher of Elisha. And when the man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha, the bones, he revived and, the bones of Elisha, not his body. Oh, and touched the bones of Elisha. Okay, so what happened, the, the, brother? Listen, the bones of Elisha, not his body. So what happened to his body? Decompose? Of course. That's why it's only bones, right? Yes, yes. So in Matthew 27, it says the bodies of those saints were laid bare and then came to life. How can it be any of the Old Testament prophets? Their bodies were gone. They were bones. Mm. So it's not referring to the Old Testament saints, right? Oh, I see. I see. Right? So it's, it's not referring to the Old Testament saints, right? Yes, yes. So it's referring to some believers at that time who believed Jesus, who had recently died, were raised like Lazarus for a short time, and they would die again like Lazarus. Oh, die again? It's when Lazarus was resurrected, did he die or live forever? Uh, he. Uh, Don't hurt me, man. Don't tell me that he didn't die because I'm going to hang up. When Lazarus was resurrected by Jesus and the widow's son was resurrected by Jesus and Jairus' daughter was resurrected by Jesus, these resurrections, were they raised to never die or raised to extend their earthly life and they would eventually die later? Uh, they, revived, they resurrected and then they died. Okay. That's what happened to Matthew 27. Those bodies that came to life, they were raised for a short time and they would die again. Oh. Right? Yes. So let me answer the question for you so you don't get confused. The apostles, when they died, their bodies went to the dust. They went to heaven as spirits with a spiritual shape, spiritual form, but not a physical body. When Jesus comes down, he will then raise their physical bodies and unite their bodies to their spirits. And that's when they will have glorified bodies. Oh. Now, let me give you the verses that you read on your own. Write them down. Are you ready? Okay. 
Okay, write down 1 Corinthians 15, 45 to 58. First Corinthians 15, 45 to 58. Uh, okay, and then write down First Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 18. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 18. Okay, okay. So that answers your question now, right? I'm not gonna read study this one. But it is it answering your question? Yes, but I just uh, kind of, because in that uh, passage, the graves opened and they went into the holy city. But now you understand, and right? Then they appeared, yes, and then they appeared to many. Yeah, they, yeah of course. When Lazarus ro raised from the city. dead, brother, listen. When Lazarus was yes, raised yes. from the dead, did he appear to many? Did he show himself to his family and friends? Yes, he came out of the graves. And time. Lazarus, hold on, Timmy is going to help me. Timmy. When Lazarus came out of the grave, Timmy, wait, wait, you know what? I haven't been giving Joey attention. Hold on, brother. My friend Joey, the couch, he feels upset because I don't give him attention. Okay. Joey, Joey, how you doing, baby? When Lazarus came out of the tomb four days later, did he appear to many people, family and friends who were there gathered? Oh, yeah? Okay. All right. So now just want to make sure. When Lazarus came out of the grave... Did he appear to many, my friend? Yes, he, he appeared it. to his family. Yeah, and then the people that were gathered, right? And then he would have went to Jerusalem. Yes, they would have seen yes. him, right? Yes, yes, Okay, yes. so what's oh, the problem? Okay. Yeah, no. Matthew 27, 52 to 53. What's the problem, dude? People had recently died who were believers, were raised temporarily, appeared to people, and then mm. died later, just like Lazarus. End of story. My brother... Oh, okay, okay. Makes Sorry, sense. Are I you sure it's making sense? Miss. Oh, yes, yes. It's make clear. Man, what's this <laughs> place, man? All right. Hope that answered your question, my brother. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anytime. Keep listening. Keep learning. Keep studying. My brother, uh, the Lord Jesus bless you. Okay. Thank you very much. Anytime, buddy. Thank you. All right. Now, hold on. Let's go through the list. Yeah, who's this? Who just called me? Caleb? Can you guys wait on calling me, man? Somebody has some questions. Hold on, because I got to go in the order that they called me. Hold on. Let me see. Someone had some questions? We marching to Zion. Okay, I guess it's. Uh, I got two more calls then. Yes. Yeah, Charlie. Hello? Charlie, why can't you be patient, Charlie? Why are you calling me 50,000? Oh, come on, just relax. Huh? Hold on, hold on a second. Hello? Just relax, okay. He told me relax, right? Okay, I'll relax. You stress me out, so I'm going to relax. Bye-bye. <laughs> Caleb, what's up, bro? Caleb, Hello? what's up, man? Talk to me, baby. Caleb, Hello? before the rapture, man, I don't want to leave you behind. Can you hear me? Yeah, what's up? Hello? Yes, uh, uh, I was, I'm sorry, uh, I have this question about uh, Matthew 15, because... A little louder, friend, <laughs> a little louder. I, I can you, I'm sorry. Yeah, is, Matthew is 15, okay? what about Matthew 15? Yeah, because I was, I, I recently watched this debate of... Because you were, you're going to be debating Matt Slick. Why? Right? Why am I going to debate him? But go ahead. That's your question. Go ahead. Yeah. Because he was, uh, it, it's about uh, uh, Calvinism, I think. Yes. Uh, he was uh, hammering this verse. Matthew 15? Uh, what about it? Yes, Matthew 15, 24. Yes. Uh, that he was sent to the lost sheep of Israel? Yes, it was only sent to the lost sheep of Israel. Okay. And... Uh, and he was hammering this verse that it's it's only talking about the uh, uh not the billy. louder uh, brother Caleb. Billy. If I can't hear you, I gotta hang up louder. Yes, uh, so certain believers. Yes, is, is this better? Yeah. Okay. So what's the question? Yeah, the question is, uh, 
he was only uh, Jesus was only sent for a specific uh, for specific people because it it uh, he was only sent for the last sheep of Israel. And which Israel is not lost, according to Matt Slick? Is there any Israelite who is not lost? Okay, hold on. Let me ask Joey. Hey, uh, Joey, Joey, Joey. Among the Israelites, was there any Israelite who was not lost, or are they all lost? Okay, so let me ask the question again. Which Israelite was not lost? Were they all lost? Yes, they were all lost. So that actually refutes Matt Slick. You ask Matt Slick, hold on, Matt. Can you show one Israelite who wasn't lost, who wasn't a lost sheep? So there were some Israelites who were not lost, they were found? No. Okay, so how does that prove his case? It's, it's like saying that this is, like Israel is the, the only, like the church, something like that. Okay, hold on. Timmy's going to get it, uh, Caleb. Hold on. Timmy. When it says he sent to the lost sheep of Israel, if every Israelite is a lost sheep, that means he was sent to gather all of them because there is not a single Israelite who isn't lost. So how does that prove Matt Slick's point that Jesus only came for the elect when every Israelite was lost? And Jesus didn't say, I only came for some of the lost sheep. I came for the lost sheep. I see. You're making sense now because Timmy got it, and Joey's like, Yes, dude, why are you asking Timmy? Ask me again. Should I ask Joey or Timmy? Who, who should I ask? <laughs> no, you mean you like Timmy more than Joey? <laughs> wait, wait, you're laughing at my friends? <laughs> no, 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 you're laughing at my friends, Caleb. By the way, my someone wanted me to ask Bobby the fridge, yo, Bobby. Are you chilling? Get it? Chilling? Because he's Bobby the Fridge. <laughs> Yo, Bobby, you chilling, baby? You get it? Bobby the Fridge. All right. So you understand? Yeah. If he sent for the lost sheep of Israel and every Israelite is lost, that means he was sent for all of them, not some of them, right? Yes, yes. So how does that prove his point? So. Like it's louder, I can't hear you. Yeah, it, like it's saying that Israel here is just the. Where the does it say the just church? the elect? You're still not getting it. Where does it say elect? It says the lost sheep of Israel, right? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Which Israelite wasn't lost? No one. So that means uh, if he's come words. for the lost sheep of Israel, it means all of them because they're all lost, right? Yes. Okay, that refutes Matt Slick. Simple, right? Mm -hmm. Did I help you or no? Okay. Yeah, it, it, it uh, uh, thank you. I, it helped me. And like, one, one last question. Go ahead, brother. But speak louder so I can hear you. Uh, and I'll do a yes, session uh, tonight, God so willing. If you guys are interested, Lord willing, tonight, I will do a session on Matthew 15, 24, and whether Jesus only came to save the elect, to refute Matt Slick. The, and by the way, I used to believe like Matt Slick Calvinism. But these are the arguments that now I'm ashamed of and disgusted because they're so bad. May the Lord Jesus have mercy on us and forgive us and show Matt Slick his error to repent of this doctrine. But go ahead. What's your other question? Yes, and yeah, one last question. Uh, it's more of a practical question. So, yes. Like how, how can I you know explain uh, or articulate to a you know, to a child about uh, uh, the concept of the Trinity because I how remember, old are they? Uh, I was asking this when I was uh, like 10 years old and I was really confused. When, okay, how old are they? Uh, when, like, how old like is the 10 child? To 12 years old, so, like around 10 to 12 years old. Well, you have to work with them and help them grow in their understanding. It's like saying teaching a child calculus or advanced algebra, you don't teach children things that are too complicated for their minds to come around. You build them to that point. You slowly teach them. And as they mature spiritually and mentally, then they'll come to a point where you can explain the Trinity. Well, they'll see, yeah, this is what it is, even though I may not fully comprehend it. For now, all you need to do is teach them that the Father is God. Jesus, his son, has the nature of his Father, just like your son has your nature. 
and the spirit is the eternal spirit of the father and son and they love one another and they always exist together keep it simple and as they mature spiritually intellectually then you can help them take it to another level it's like taking a six-year-old and teaching them algebra and calculus it's not going to work okay meet them at their level explain it on their level for them to understand okay right so great, great. and when they I get to the problem. age they can understand algebra teach them algebra all you need to do is right now tell them god is the father jesus is his son and jesus being his son has the nature of his father like you are my son you have my nature and the holy spirit is their eternal spirit and these three love one another and always exist together. And then Jesus came into the world to be born as a baby. Make it simple. And as they grow, explain it and then give them the biblical proof so they don't doubt it. Okay. Right? All right. Uh, thank you. Great. If you have more questions, yes. don't be intimidated, brother. But just it's like you guys, it no. sounds like you're Filipino and you come and you speak very slow like you're scared. It's okay. You can speak fast and yell at me. Yeah. But just don't 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 laugh at my friend Joey ever again. Then I'm gonna have to block okay, you. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Say it I'm louder sorry. so Joey can hear you. Say I'm sorry, Joey. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, Joey. Yeah. I'm Joey sorry. says I don't care. I don't want to talk to you. Joey, come on, you gotta forgive, stupid. He said, you know what? It's gonna take me a while. So he's gonna forgive you. It takes him a while. He gets angry. Yeah. You know, but hey, Joey. Bobby said, chill, Joey. Bobby the fridge says, chill. And Timmy's about to come off the wall because you got to have some love and compassion. That's okay, bro. I'll talk to him. Thank you for apologizing. I'll talk to him. I'll try to calm him down. All right? All right. Any Thank other questions? Sam, God bless. No questions? No. I'm, yeah, no, no questions. I'm good. So did the answers help you? Yes, the answers help. Okay. I'll, I'll watch your session. Yeah, I'll, and anytime you have questions, call me. Your... Any questions you have, call me. Okay. I'll try to answer by the grace of Jesus Christ. Be patient with me as I answer. But do let me know when you're going to call me. Send me a message. I'm calling you so I can block you, okay? Okay. I'm just kidding. You know I'm not going to block you. You know that, right? <laughs> See, now Joey laughed okay, at thank that. Thank you. Joey, you want me to block him, huh? <laughs> Bobby, you told him to chill. Enough, dude. All right, anyway, go, bro. I'll talk to you some of them. God bless you, bro. Yeah, God bless you. Just take care, bro. Okay, now Ooh. we got Rahim, my man. Rahim! What's up, Wahid? Hello, my brother. Wahid. How are you doing, brother? Praise the Lord. Lord bless you. What's your question, Wahid? I, was, uh, I have a very easy question for you. Man, I don't have deep answer. And uh, I want to uh, sing song for you and all. Oh, please. Let me know when you want to sing so I can block you. You're going to sing now? Yeah. Okay, let me block you. Hold on. Let me block more. you. Let me block you. No good. What's your question, brother? Because we're already What do you have a question? Oh, uh, yeah. Question is easy that uh, when Jesus, uh, you know, uh, uh, when the Jesus says God is bigger than me. You mean God is mean, greater than me, not bigger, man. Yeah. See, you know why you say okay. bigger? You know why you say bigger? Yeah. Because you looked at me and you saw I'm bigger because I have more weight than you. Why you attack me, man? No, 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 no. I'm bigger than you. Why you attack me, man? He didn't say God is I'm bigger sorry. than me. He said, the father is greater than me, not bigger. But see, you yeah. look at me, you saw I'm big, and so you thought bigger because I have more weight than you. Why you attack me, man? Why you say I'm bigger, man? No, no, no. You you, you, you are good. I, I look more uh, bigger than you. Okay, man. So you I'm say I'm smaller? Now. Am I smaller? You, no, no, you're good. So, But am I smaller than you or am I bigger, man? I'm a bigger. Okay. All right. So what did Jesus mean? The father is greater than I? Yeah. Only this time. Now, I have a lot of I sessions. Know. I have done a lot of sessions. I even have, a, I think, a 13-minute clip on this. And I have articles, but I'll answer it again. You guys want me to answer it again? John 14, 28, the father is greater than I. You guys want me to answer it again? Just want to, because if not, I'll just give you the link. If they want me to answer, I'll answer it. Okay. They want me to answer. Do you have your Bible with you, man? Yes. Go to John 14, 28, open it up, and I'll tell you when to read. But you call me bigger, 
Now, Timmy, he's very angry with you. Can I do before? As you open, okay. When you open John 14, 28. John 14. Yeah, just get there. Don't read it yet because I have to step away for a second. But before I do that, I want to sing you a song. Can I sing you a song? Yeah, Pinchy Topi Wale. Okay, tur see, that's it. You got me upset. Okay, I'm going to sing something else. To a cheese party, to a cheese party, eh, mustamas. To a cheese party, to a cheese party, eh, mustamas. All right, good. Get it ready. I'll be right there. Give me one second. Hold on. Man, what's this place, man? Why are you feel like this, man? No good, man. Problem, man. You make a problem for me, man. Why you make problems, man? Aren't you my friend? No good, no good. Man, why are you good at this, man? No good, no good, proud of very good, buddy. All right, that's sorry. Are you ready? Okay, brother, you ready? Yes. All right. Yes, brother. John I'm 14. Job. John 14, I 28. I was listening to you. Who's listening to John me? 14. Who's listening to me? Yes. You said John. someone's listening to me. Who's listening to me? John 14. Okay, John's listening to me. Okay, good job. Why do I hear cars in the background? Are you driving? You know you can't drive and read. No. and You are no. dangerous, man. I Who give you license, man? No, I'm outside from a company. I was listening to you. What you outside, man? Why are you driving in the highway and talking and reading? You're going to make accident, man. No, I, I'm sit down. Uh, it's my lunch break, so okay, I sit right. down. All right, John 14, 28. Outside. Read it for me. Read it for me. John 14, John 14 28. Yes, go ahead. Okay. Ye have heard how I said... Unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If ye love me, ye would rejoice, because I said, I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. Okay, so Jesus says the Father is greater than I, but be happy I'm going to him because the Father is greater than I. Let me explain. Either this means the Father is better than Jesus because the Father is God and Jesus is not. Or it means the Father is greater than I in position. Why? Because the Father is in glory in heaven on his throne while I'm on earth in the position of a slave as a servant and my glory is hid. So which meaning makes sense? That the father is better because he's God, I'm not. Or the father is greater in position because he is in heaven on his throne in his glorious form. Which is why I'm going to him. Because if I don't go to him and I remain on earth, he'll be greater than me. Let me show you the answer by going to John 14, 12 to 14. John 14, 12 to 14. Read that for me slowly, brother. Can you? John 14. 12 to 14. Okay. Truly, truly, I said to you, whoever believe in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do, because I'm going to the Father. Now, be, stay right there. They will do greater works than me. Same word, greater. But notice, he's saying, you're going to do the works I did. Whatever I did, you'll do, but you're going to do greater works. Now, Jesus does not mean you're going to do better works than mine, that my works will not be as good as yours. They're going to be better. That's impossible. By greater, he means you're going to do the very works I do, but you're going to do more of those works, a greater number, because you're going to go to more places, reach more people, and do more miracles. So greater in terms of number, more works than I did, but you're going to do the works I did. Now, why? Now, notice he says, because I'm going to the Father, right? Yeah. He says, you're going to do greater works than these because I'm going to the Father. Well, what's the connection? 
What does Jesus going to the Father have to do with them doing greater works? Read now 13 for the answer. 13 for the answer. One second. John 14, 13. Same chapter. Don't lose your chapter, buddy. You got to stay there because by the time you find the chapter, yep. all the cars Jesus. are going to go. <clears throat> there you go. Yeah, Jesus said, whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Okay, there's the answer. When I go to the Father, that's when you'll ask me while I'm with the Father in heaven, and I will do the works for you from heaven. Now read verse 14. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. Did you catch it? First, Did you catch what he said? I will go to the Father. You will ask me in my name when I'm with the Father. And I will do whatever you ask when I'm with the Father. I'll do the works for you and through you. So you know why you're going to do greater works? Because I'm going to heaven. You'll be praying to me. I'll answer your prayers, and I will do the miracles for you. Now, let me ask you a question, brother. You ready? Yes. Yes. What kind of qualities must Jesus have to answer every single prayer offered to him in his name by all his followers, no matter how many they are, no matter where they're at, that he can answer all their prayers at the same time and do all the miracles that they ask at the same time while he's in heaven. He's a God, same God. You got it. He must be all powerful, yep. all knowing because not only he hears prayer, but he answers prayer and only God in heaven answers prayer. So he must be all powerful and all knowing to answer prayers while he's with the father. So right there, he shows he's all powerful, all knowing. That means he's equal to the Father in glory and power, right? Yep. Now read John 14, 23. John 14, John 23. 14, 20, 14, 23. Yes. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my word. And my father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our ab abode with him. Did you catch it? Jesus said, if anyone loves me, he'll keep my words. And those who love me, my father and I, together, I and my father, will come to him and live with him and remain with him. Jesus claims he will be present with every single believer, no matter how many they are, all over the world, he will be with them, live with them, watch over them to the same degree that the Father is with believers. He's saying, I, with my Father, will be with every believer to the same degree that my Father is able to be with every believer. Doesn't that sound like Jesus is claiming to be equal to the Father? Yep. Yeah. And doesn't this show that Jesus, like the Father, is omnipresent and omniscient because he must know who truly loves him and is obeying him. And then he must have the ability to live with him and be with him and remain with him and watch over him the way the Father does? Yep. So in that yes, very 100%. chapter, Jesus claimed to be equal to the Father because like the Father, he's omniscient. Like the Father, he's omni omnipresent. Like the Father, he's omnipotent. He answers prayers which is only what God does in heaven. So that means when he says the Father is greater than I, it cannot mean the Father is greater than I, meaning that he is God and I'm a creature. It must mean because the Father is in heaven, on his throne, in his glorious form, and I'm on earth as a servant with my glory hidden, where people spit at me, beat me, and whip me, and will kill me. In that sense, he's greater than I, meaning greater rank and position. But when I go to him, that won't be the case. Because when I go to him, I will then regain my glory that I had with him before the world was. Read John 17, verse 5. John 17, verse 5. And then I hope you got your answer, brother. Yep. Yep. 
Thanks, These guys who call me while I'm on a call with someone, they're going to get blocked. You guys who keep calling when I'm with somebody, that shows their suspect. I want to be blocking you. But go ahead. John and, 17, verse 5. And now, and now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. Let me ask you two questions. Jesus says, I possess the same glory that the Father possesses. And I share that glory alongside the Father. Can any creature say that? No, because God don't give his glory to anyone. And then secondly, Jesus said, this glory that I will possess when I go to the Father is the glory I had with the Father next to him before the creation of the world. So before the creation of the world, I was there alongside the Father, side by side with him, in the same glory that I set aside when I came to the earth, and now I will receive. Can a creature talk like that? No. So you got your answer? Yep, 100%. God bless you, you, brother. Thank you so much. Brother. And go to my videos, my God articles, where you, I brother. talk about this. Yeah, I always watch, you know, because at my job, I, I used to be listening to music. But now I just, even I don't watch you sometimes live. I, I listen at my job my friend, I'm working and they allow us to listen. My friend, don't listen to music because when you listen to me, I give you music, I give you comedy, I give you drama, I give you horror, and I give you theology. All in one <laughs> session. See? There you go. You laugh at That's me. That's right. Man. You laugh at me, man. You laugh at me. I'm shaking my head, man. This is what they do in India. No good, no good. Why you do this, man? <laughs> Problem, problem. Man, you're still laughing at me. You hurt my... Hey, Joey? Joey. <laughs> See, and you're laughing at Joey too? Timmy's about to come off the wall no, and no, start I'm smashing happy. you. I'm, I'm, wallahi, brother. I'm wallahi. I'm happy now. All right, brother. I got my answer. I'm so happy. Thank you, uh, brother. brother. I have my one friend and I used you have to friends? share, you know, the word of God, you know. Wait, wait, wait. My brother. And, you, uh, wait, wait. Hold on. You actually have friends? Yeah. In, in, you know, and uh, he's he's my customer, so I deliver stuff. And he was converted to Muslim yes. before Corona. And one year, you know, I've been telling him about Islam and Christianity, you know. Yes. And he get mad at me all the time. You know how Muslim get mad yeah. if you criticize. And before COVID, he was Muslim. And after four months, I met him, and he had a cross in his neck. And I said, "What happened?" He say, I'm no more Muslim. I'm Glory Christian to Jesus. Now. Glory to Jesus Christ. And I have. Glory to Jesus Christ. Amen. I'll, I'll, I will bring him one day live with Please, you. Please, I'll answer his and, questions. Uh, God bless you, shine yep. his face on you, and fill you with the spirit to keep winning Muslims and bring them out of Islam to Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. But one thing I want to tell you, Thank I want to share with you before you hang up. One thing. You said before Corona, right? Yeah. The, okay, tell him that's why he needs to stop drinking Corona and start drinking Heineken and Budweiser. Yeah. No, he was a drug seller too. Oh, he was? I'm just kidding. He used to sell drugs. All right. Yeah, he went to jail. He converted. And you know how people convert in the jail. And yes. he sell drugs. And uh, then I talked to him. And he was questioning his mind. And then another Christian brother during Corona, you know, he was Christian. And he teach more about Bible. And he accept Jesus Christ. Glory to Jesus Christ. May God use you. Bring them out yeah. of the darkness and into the light of Jesus. And preserve you. Amen. And provide for Amen. you. But that's why I tell people, no Corona, only Budweiser and Heineken, no okay? <laughs> okay man, you laugh at me again, man. You. you hurt my feeling, man. No good, no good problem. All right, brother. I love you, man. <laughs> Thank you, brother. I love you. God too. bless you. Take care. All right. Okay, so I guess, guys, I got still got more callers. What are you guys laughing at? Dude? Am I like a comedian? You're clown? What's up, Soso? -so? Hey, can I share something I with you? I want you to hear something. I want you to hear something, young man, handsome young man. I eat Soso -so for breakfast, okay? I eat Soso -so for breakfast, okay? You know? You want to go to war? I'll take you to war, okay? okay? You don't know what I'm talking about, right? Uh, Do you have any idea what I'm talking about? How old are you? I'm 14. Okay, do me a favor, brother. By the grace of Jesus, never watch this movie because I don't want to spoil you and I don't want your parents to get angry. 
There's a movie called Scarface. In it, there's a guy named Sosa. He's a drug dealer. So Tony Montana said, I eat Sosa. Oh, you want to go to war? Huh? I'll take you to war. Okay? 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 All right, anyway, but I don't want you to watch that movie, all right? Because you're young and you're innocent. May you stay innocent and pure for Jesus. What's your question, young man? So uh, I, I watched your uh, video, like, I, I think one month ago. I'm sorry and someone that. was talking about, like, Jesus, uh, de like, demanded people to kill babies or uh -huh. stone babies. No way. Yeah. Hush. That's true. Really? Because I think I saw it in the Bible, like, Hush. Blessed are those who stone, like, the babies or something. You're kidding me. Hush, okay, do me a favor, my brother. Go on my YouTube channel, search for yeah. Old Testament violence, and then go on YouTube and search for Sam Shamoon, violence in the Old Testament. I already addressed these questions because it's going to take too long for me to answer now, and I'm going to give you another article. Ready? You ready on that? Yep. Are you sure? I want to know something. Can I get something? Yeah. I eat salsa for breakfast. You want to go to war? I'll take you to war, okay? I'm going to you, friend. I turn it, the article on hatching babies. That's for you. Put on it, save it, and here for you. I got a couple more for you, right? What a handsome young man are you? Are you Egyptian? I'm Syrian. You're Syrian? Okay. Let me give you one more. You ready? Okay. Oh, so so right. You have to in the mic because I keep your hand in the mic. Uh, you're too close to my brow. Can you get a song with me? Will you sing with me? I'll try. Okay, say it. Here, I want to say it. Oh, in the wind. Say a little louder. I can't hear you. Your mic is not good. Speak. Oh, oh here. I want you to sing the song. Say, dust in the wind. Dust in the wind. All we are is dust in the wind. Uh, something, something in the wind. Okay, here, I'll repeat it again. All we are is dust in the wind. I cannot hear that. You little sinner. Did you get the articles? Yeah. Okay, both articles will answer those questions because it will take me too long. It's almost three hours. Guys, yeah. I'm giving you the links to articles. You must read it to answer these questions and be equipped for the glory of Jesus. Any other questions? Nope. You're a good man. Listen. Read those. Come back to me if you need more questions, all right? Okay. Okay, Thank again, you. now I want you to say this before I hang up. You ready? Yeah. Right. You want to go to war? Yes, I want to go. I'll take you to war. Okay. And then say, I eat salsa for breakfast. I eat salsa for breakfast. You can't eat sausage. It's haram. You don't eat sausage for breakfast. Yes, yes. Yeah, kafir. Sorry, sorry. All right. No, God bless you, brother. Just kidding. Sorry. Thank you. Lord bless you, buddy. Take care. Okay, I think one final call. Who was it this time? Let's see. A, B, I guess. A, B, C, yeah. Uh. We're almost done. This will be the last call, guys. It's been almost three hours. This year. You there, buddy? Hello, AB? Yes, AB. Hello, sir. How are you, sir? I'm good, yeah, sir. I was watching your video now. Thank you, sir. God bless you. What's the question? So my question is... Uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm running out of words, but still. Are you nervous, okay. brother? Yeah, I am. Okay, hold, hold on. I'm going to help you. Okay, I'm going to help you be, not be nervous. You ready? Are you ready? I am. Okay. Repeat yeah. after me and you're going to be okay. I promise you. If you do what I'm saying, you're going to be okay. I'm not lying. So you ready? Yeah, I am. Logos. Logos. You're not saying it from your heart, and you're not saying it the way I'm saying it. One more time. Logos. Right. Logos. Theos. Theos. Logos. Logos. 
Theos. Theos. Okay, so now don't you feel better now? Yeah. All right. Okay, go ahead. What's your question? I, I do. I do. Yeah. What's your question? My question is uh, <clears throat> now it is, um, uh, I see in India, uh, there's a lot of uh, remorse that is coming in. A lot like, of what? Uh, Christians are being treated uh, like as if uh, we are the enemies for the nation. Yes. Okay. All these, uh, even the politicians have come up with the agenda. Uh, they are spreading out uh, the rumors and um, wrong teachings, saying that uh, these Christians are from the outside. In other, in other words, they, they're, they're spreading rumors like Britishers have come in yeah, and they brought in this Christianity. Uh, Christianity yeah, and, yeah. Uh, to so, it, uh, and uh, in, uh, you know, brother, before you move on, India, before we, converting. Before etc. you move on, brother, My I can't. Question is, okay, before you ask questions, sorry, Jun, I, you. I'm just trying to say because sorry. I want you to know I can't settle political problems in India. So if there's a question more relevant to Christianity, ask me that because political problems are beyond my control. It's in the hands of the Lord God. Nations will arise to persecute yeah. the church. That's John 15. In fact, you have your Bible? Yeah. You have your Bible? Yeah, I do. Go to John 15, read yes. verses 18 to 19. John 15, verses 18 to 19. <laughs> okay. You're Give laughing too, brother? Moment, we didn't even read, man. Yeah, let me, <laughs> as you get through, I'm going to dance for you. <laughs> Uh, okay, when you get there, John 15, 18 to 19. John is, is, is before Revelation. You know that, right? No, not before Revelation. Yeah, John I, is before, John. No, John is before Revelation 15. and it's after Genesis. Did you find it, brother? Yeah, uh, I'm at John 15, and what is the verse? Verses 18 to 19. 18 to 19, mm -hmm. okay. <clears throat> if the world hates you, know that it has hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. But because you are not of the world, but I chose you, out of the world, therefore, the world hates you. There's your answer. Any country that hates Jesus yep. is going to hate you because you belong to Jesus Christ. So when you talk about India, I can't solve the political situation or climate. Only Jesus can. But Jesus told you beforehand, <laughs> don't be shocked when the world hates you, nations hate you and want to kill you because they hate me because they're the, under the influence of Satan until I return. You remain faithful, preach the gospel, love Jesus, and be willing to suffer for him, and God will exalt you. But what's your question, if you have a specific question? Yeah, my question is, uh, uh, these people also uh, highlight the crusades. Yeah. Now, uh, my point is, is it the uh, Islam that has uh, started spreading uh, first, or was it, uh, I mean, the How Crusaders, did Crusaders come into the picture? Robert Spencer has an excellent book on the Crusaders. Crusades, look for Robert Spencer. The Crusaders was a response to the Muslim invasion and control of Jerusalem. Even though what the Crusaders did, did there were times where they went beyond and exceeded and did things that they shouldn't, but that's just the nature of things. When you have corrupt human beings who are not saved, <clears throat> entrusted with the task, they will end up doing things that are contrary to scripture and evil and grievous to the Holy Spirit. So unfortunately, not everyone in the army was a believer. And they used it as a pretext to go and loot and kill and pillage, which was contrary to the Lord Jesus Christ. But the Crusaders was a response to Islam because they had taken over Jerusalem and were persecuting Christians and not allow them to visit their holy sites. So we need to protect our people. We need to protect our families. We need to protect our lands. When an invader comes wanting to rape, pillage, and kill, and steal. What we can't do as Christians, we can't kill people for not accepting the gospel. So there's a difference. Someone who doesn't accept the gospel, I have no yes. right to harm him. Someone who blasphemes the Lord Jesus, I have no right to kill him. I entrust him to God. That's different 
from whether Christians yes. have a right to protect their lands, their children, their women, their churches from an invader who comes to loot, steal, pillage, burn, rape, and murder. You have every right to protect yourself in that context. Amen. So I hope that answered the question. Thank you, Sam. You've been you ready. Brother. Call me again when yes, we have questions. Did. And Lord, will I answer because I'm going to shut down right now. Excellent question. I hope you got your answer. And I pray Jesus Christ, my Lord, save me from errors. If I made mistakes, may correct them in me and perfect the truth we proclaim and live it out for the glory of Jesus. Anytime you have questions, let me know. But brother, can you do me a favor? Can you do yes. me a favor? When you have a question, can you like send me a text message like 20 minutes before I go live? I'll do that. Yeah, I'll because my, what I want to do, do is that. when I know I'll you're it's you, say it's me so I can block you. Is that okay? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding, man. I eat salsa for breakfast. See, I get you confused, man. I make you confused. I never turn you, Frank. All right, I love you, brother. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you, Sam. Anytime. God bless you. God bless you. You guys got to admit, you got to admit something. Here's what you got to admit. And I'm not boasting, may the Lord Jesus destroy my pride and arrogance and keep me humble, teachable, holy, and pure. How many YouTube channels do you know where you got a misfit, a nut, a mentally challenged, disturbed, gorgeous Assyrian beast where you're going to get comedy, you're going to get drama, you're going to get horror, you're going to get singing all in one session as you learn theology. I mean, come on, guys. Stop hating. All right. With that said, I got to do some errands. I may be on tonight. If I do come on tonight, I will be responding to some of the claims of Calvinists like Matt Slick that twist and butcher scripture to prove that Jesus only came for the elect. The Bible doesn't teach it. It's a man-made tradition. It's not biblical. And this is coming from someone that used to be a Calvinist. And I don't say this to respect Calvinists because I have some brothers and sisters in Jesus who are Calvinists who love the Lord. Anthony Rogers, a theological beast. Edward Dalcor, I love and respect them. But I could not embrace this doctrine or this system anymore because I saw too much scripture against it. And if I'm right, the Lord Jesus will confirm it. And may he be glorified. May Christ increase. May we decrease. We love you, Father. Lord Jesus, we love you. Holy Spirit, we love you. Seal us in union with Christ to never betray the Lord, turn away from the Lord, or shame the Lord. And Holy Spirit, bless our loved ones, my daughters, and seal them for the glory of Christ. And cover us in the blood of Jesus. Give us the health we need to serve the Lord, the holiness to delight the Lord, and provide for us for the glory of Jesus. Have your way. Father, Son, and Spirit, in Jesus' name, Maranatha. Lord willing, I may see you tonight. Look for the announcement on Facebook. Usually on Facebook, I announce when I'm about to go live. Christ is risen, risen indeed.